If you like the story you can support the author on Patreon link is in the description. Chapter 51 Announcement Near evening a maid came in with some butlers to take measurement of Sparta for his suit. Zekram had asked him before that if he had a suit or not. After that, they quietly left the room and informed him that his suit will be delivered shortly. This time Sparta was shocked at how fast someone can make a suit. At the party. A lot of noble families came to attend the party. The devil kings also came except Falbium Asmodeus. Sana and Rias brought their peerage and a lot of other young devils also did the same. Sparta was currently wearing a black suit without any tie. Sparta also joined the party and the three devil kings talking to each other. Sira spotted him and quickly made her way towards Sparta. Sira, you look quite handsome and dashing in the suit. Sparta, you look quite beautiful too. Sira, Sparta why don't you join us? Sparta, if the others don't mind. Sira didn't say anything and grabbed his hand and started dragging him towards where Sertsk and Ajilka were. Sertsk, Sparta so do you find the underworld? Sparta, I have been here before since birth, not much has changed here except the food. Ajilka, where did you live? Sparta, here and there. Sertsk, I was kind of guessing that you were not going to give us a straight answer. Sparta, well you know me too well, well I will see you later I got to meet with few peoples. Sparta left them and started searching for Sana and her peerage. After looking for a bit Sparta found them. He quietly sneaked behind Sana. Sparta, hello beautiful. Sana, what they? Don't sneak up on me like that. Where were you, I have been looking for you. Sparta, I was with your sister talking with the mus. Sana, how are they taking it? Sparta, well currently they aren't so angry about that I think. Tsubaki, I thought they would hold a grudge. Sana, no they respect the strong who wins fair and square. Sparta, I need to meet with Akino and Chiron too, have you seen them? Sana, yes they are here, they are with Rias. After that Sparta started looking for Akino and Chiron and soon found them sitting on a table along with Rias and others. Sparta slowly made his way towards them. Sparta, Akeno you look beautiful in that dress. Akeno, Sparta you are also looking handsome. Sparta, well I live to please. Akeno was about to say something but Zekram entered the party and started hitting his champagne glass with a spoon to gain everyone's attention, immediately the crowd becomes silent and everyone turned towards him. Zekram, I would like to invite Sparta to come over here. Sparta made his way towards him through the crowd of devils and stood beside Zekram. Zekram, well we all have gathered here today in the honor of Sparta. He has defeated a devil king today with really less effort which shows us how strong he is. I would like to congratulate Sparta for his win and also wish him luck so that he keeps winning like this in future battles. Now everyone cheers. Everyone present their cheered except a few devils, even the devil kings have cheered. Sparta started to make his way back to Akeno but Lord and Lady Satri greeted him. Lord Satri, congratulations Sparta for winning. It was really a nice fight. Lady Satri, it really was. Sparta, glad I was able to put up a show. Lord Satri, it is your first win and the party is kept in honor of you, don't you think that this is a nice opportunity for us to announce your marriage contract with Sana? Sparta, I don't mind, but have you talked with Sana? Lady Satri, yes we asked her and she was ready to do it. Sparta, okay so let's do this. Lady Satri. Wait here with my husband I am going to call Sana. Lady Satri went to bring Sana, a few moments later she brought Sana with her. Sana's cheeks were completely red. The four of them stepped on the stage. Lord Satri started hitting his champagne glass with a spoon to gain everyone's attention, immediately the crowd becomes silent and everyone turned towards him. Now everyone saw Sparta along with Sana and her parents standing on the stage. Some were able to guess what were they going to say and some already knew. Lord Satri. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, this is a pleasant evening and pleasant occasion. Today I want to announce that my daughter Sana Satri has selected a strong man for herself, who has also proven to her that he is smart by beating her in chess that man is none other than Sparta Gilgamesh Lucifer. Some of the devil family's heads were jealous hearing this announcement, they were thinking about how they can take the Satri family's place. Now Satri family would greatly prosper and their reputation would go up a lot. But some devils hearing that were really happy. Some young devils were really angry over him that Sparta not only stole their limelight and even took a beautiful clan heiress from a powerful family. Many devils came to congratulate Sparta and Sana, some came with good intentions and some came with schemes in their mind. But none of the schemers were able to make a move because they were scared of him. 
Time passed and many families have started to leave because it was getting late. Soon the party ended Sparta said farewell to Satri's family while they were leaving with Sana and Sira. Sparta also said farewell to Akeno and Chiron. After the party, Sparta was completely tired and he needed to rest because the next day there would the fight between Rias's peerage and the fallen angels. Sparta fell asleep thinking about how he should capture those fallen. Chapter 52, Fallen Angels Sparta woke up in the morning and was invited by a maid to have breakfast. He was led by the maid to the dining table. Zekram was already sitting behind the table waiting for Sparta. Zekram, I hope you didn't have any problem. Sparta, your hospitality was really nice. Zekram, I didn't expect you accepting someone's marriage proposal. Sparta, it has been between me and Sana Satri for some time, it was just announced officially yesterday. Zekram, well then it is nice to hear, but now many families would try to do that, be careful. Sparta, I know, I would be leaving to the human world after breakfast. Zekram, I would have liked if you stayed longer. Sparta, I have some stuff to take care of. After having breakfast he told farewell to Zekram and snapped his fingers and a garganta opened. Zekram saw garganta and got interested and wanted to ask about it but Sparta already stepped in the garganta and it closed. Zekram decided to ask him next time. A garganta opened inside Sparta's house and he stepped out and saw Tia leaving the house to go to school. She saw Sparta and stopped. Tia, so you came? Have fun last night? Sparta, well it was pretty nice, wait for me I will join you. Tia waited for Sparta to get ready, after some time Sparta came in his school uniform and took his car out from the garage. Tia and Sparta drove off to school. Sparta was sitting in the class and was pretty much bored he kept looking outside the window. Soon the bell rang which indicated the start of lunch break. Tsubaki came to Sparta and called him to come to SCR. He went to the SCR with her and entered inside. Sparta, Sana what happened? Sana, there is a priest in our territory who is killing devil's clients and he is being helped by fallen angels. Sparta, how did you get the information? Sana, yesterday after the party Rias came back with her peerage to the human world to complete contracts. She sends Issei to a house but when he reached there the client was already dead. He was pinned on the wall and cut to pieces, when Rias with her peerage reached there and started pushing him back he was saved by fallen angels. Sparta, Azazel told me about them. Sana, why didn't you do anything? Sparta, well I was not in the town, I will take care of them tonight. Sana, well so that is now taken care of. Sparta, I wanted to ask you something since our marriage contract is announced would you like to move in with me? Sana's cheek became completely red, she looked away from Sparta. Sana, I I I would love to. Sparta, you look so cute my love. Steam started to come out of Sana's head, her whole peerage was giggling except Saji. He saw the battle between Sparta and Falbium, he knew the difference between their strength but he was still not able to accept his king's relation with Sparta. Sparta talked some more with Sana and after that, he left the room went to the cafeteria to eat food with Tia. After the school was over Sparta dropped Tia at home and drove his car to the church and waited for the boob dragon emperor to show up. After waiting for an hour Issei showed up along with Chiron and Kaiba in front of the church and directly stormed in. Sparta, well Issei is Issei but I expected better from Chiron. Outside church. Kala Warner, what do you think happened to Don Zeke? Middled, who cares? You have me the greatest fallen angel ever. Soon they were attacked by lightning magic and two young women wearing Kyuaha school's uniform appeared before them. Akino, there is nothing great about you though. Rias, you came to my territory and hurt my cute servant your punishment will be death. Middled, bring it on spoiled princess I will show you fallen angel's might. Well I am also interested to see fallen angel might. Kala Warner, who is there show yourself. Kala Warner made a light spear and threw to the direction the voice came. A handsome boy with silver hair and red eyes came into their view. The spear touched him and shattered. Sparta, well that was really rude. Since you freely attacked me I will do the same. Sparta closed his eyes and then opened his eyes but everyone could see ripple patterned purple eyes. Sparta used universal pull and Kala Warner came closer to him Sparta grabbed her throat and started squeezing her throat. Sparta, well surrender or die. Middled, let her go or I will kill you. Middled made a light spear and threw it at Sparta. Sparta, well I tired. As soon as the light spear touched him it returned to middle to with triple speed and pierced her stomach. Seeing that everyone was shocked, none of them knew what happened. 
Middle coughed up blood and fell on the ground and died. Kala Warner, I surrender. Sparta let go Kala Warner's throat. Rias, Sparta what are you doing here? Sparta, well I came to clear out trash. Fallen where is the other thrash? Kala Warner, she is inside extracting the nun's sacred gear. Akino, Sparta your dominance makes me so hot. Sparta, I can show you a lot more my love. Saying that Sparta started walking towards the church. Kala Warner was really scared of Sparta she was walking timidly behind him. Akeno and Rias were also following him. They entered the church and saw Issa crying over the dead body of Asia and Rainare was nowhere to be found. Chiron was entered the church dragging Rainare by her hair. Sparta, well they're the other insect. Rainare, Kala Warner why are you standing with enemies come and help me and where is Middleton? Kala Warner, Middleton is dead and I surrendered to him. Rainare, you traitor. Sparta, you can discuss all you want later now I give you two options give up the nun's sacred gear and surrender or die along with it and rip it off from your corpse. Rainare, who do you think you are? I will never give up. Kala Warner, Rainare he is very strong you cannot win against him, please surrender. Sparta, listen to your friend. Rainare, I would rather die. Sparta, well have it your way. Sparta's eyes started rotating it changed from Rin Egan to Sharingan and Sparta used Tsukuyomi on Rainare. Her eyes became blank and foam started to come out of her mouth and she dropped to the ground breathing heavily. Everyone was shocked by what Sparta did to her with just a word. If they were not scared of Sparta before, they were definitely scared now. Sparta crouched near Rainare and took off the rings of twilight healing and handed them to a scared Rias. Then Sparta used Amaterasu to put Rainare on fire. Sparta snapped his fingers and a garganta opened, he gestured Kala Warner to enter it and after her, he also stepped inside and the garganta closed. He left behind a hot Akino and a scared Rias and her peerage. A garganta opened near Azazel which surprised him. Sparta came out along with Kala Warner. Kala Warner saw Azazel and got scared. Azazel, what about the other three? Sparta, dead. Azazel, well nothing to do then. Sparta, now let's talk about the favor you owe me. Chapter 53, Maids Azazel, so what do you need? Sparta, you see my house is really big, Tia does nothing just lazes around and Amy cannot do everything because she is busy with her job. So I want some maids. Azazel, so you have made fetish? Sparta, what the hell are you talking about you pervert? I want maids that will work in my house. Azazel, yes whatever. See your house's size 3 will be enough I think. Okay, I will drop them in a week. Sparta, not gonna work make it faster. Azazel, okay day after tomorrow? How is it? Sparta, okay done, I am going home now. Azazel, I heard about your adventures in the underworld. Sparta, words travel pretty fast I guess. So who else knows? Azazel, except for the whole Grigori? Heaven knows and some other factions. Sparta, well at least now they will know that not to mess with me. Azazel, so let me guess you used your phasing ability to pass his barrier right? Sparta, you are too dangerous to be kept alive. Azazel, hey, hey, hey. If you kill me who will give you the maids? Sparta, well point taken, I don't want to talk anymore I am tried. Sparta opened a garganta and entered it, the garganta closed and Azazel let out a sigh and looked at Kala Warner. Kala Warner started shaking, she was really scared of what was Azazel going to do with her. Azazel, now what should I do with you? You and your friends caused a lot of trouble. Kala Warner didn't reply but she got even paler, she was sweating really hard. Azazel, I got an idea, yes that is perfect. Sparta came home and saw Tia laying on the couch, seeing her Sparta got a tick mark on his head. Sparta, Tia stop lazing around and do something. Tia, what? I just polished some of my treasures. Sparta knew speaking with her is no use, she only cares about food and her treasures. Sparta smartly decided to leave her alone or it will just make him more angry. Sparta went and took a bath, after that he started to make dinner when Amy also came back. They had dinner together after that they went to sleep. The next day Sparta told Tia to go to school on her own because he wanted to spend some time with Akino. He took his car and drove to Akino's house. When Akeno came out of the house to leave for school she was shocked to see Sparta standing in front of her house in his car. Akeno came near him. Akeno, I thought you forgot about me. Sparta, that is not possible. 
Sparta wrapped his arms around her brought her closer and then he kissed her. After the kiss, they both got into the car. Sparta, so what happened after I left? Akeno, Rias reincarnated Asia as her bishop. Sparta, well good for her. Akeno, what happened with the fallen angel you took with you? Sparta, don't know don't care, I just dropped her to Azazel and left. Akeno I wanted to ask you something. Akeno, what is it? Sparta, I would like you to move in with me. Akeno, yes gladly. I was thinking when you were going to ask me that. After that, they both reached school and went towards the class. Sana and Akeno decided that they will move in tomorrow together because tomorrow was the weekend and they were free. When Rias heard that Akeno would be moving in with Sparta, she was a little sad but she was happy for Akeno since she found happiness. Then she started thinking about herself that her dream would never be fulfilled. After school, Sparta was informed by both Sana and Akeno that they will move in tomorrow. Sparta went home with Tia and the rest of his day was pretty normal. After dinner, they went to sleep and they had some fun in their room before going to sleep. The next day Sparta woke up and found himself only with Tia meaning Amy had left early morning. He went downstairs and found that breakfast was already prepared. After breakfast was over Sparta was watching TV with Tia and a magic circle appeared in the room. Azazel came out of it along with three women in made uniforms, Sparta saw them and recognized one of them. Azazel, I brought what you asked, now you can fulfill your fetish. Sparta, that's really good work, but tell me where I should bury you. Azazel, there is no need to do that, meet your three maids. You know this one her name is Kala Warner, this one's name is Kelly and the last one's name is Martel. Kelly had black hair with bob cut style and Martel had long blonde hair which was tied into a ponytail it reached up to her knees. Tia, this is good thinking now I don't have to work anymore. Sparta, you will not be ordering them to polish your treasures, they will only work in the house. Tia, but that is also an important job. Sparta, do it yourself. Azazel, well I have a lot of work to do so I will be leaving, ciao. Sparta. Well Kala Warner, Kelly, and Martel I am not much into ordering someone you three divide tasks within yourselves and another thing did Azazel told you who else lives in my house? Kelly, no master, he didn't tell us. Sparta, that damn crow. Well firstly don't call me master, I am not into that stuff and take a seat before I tell you about everyone it's for your own safety. They sat on the couch after that Sparta told them who lives with him, what kind of guests they should expect and about his two more fiancés moving in today. At the end of the explanation all three of them were shaking and completely pale. They made a point in their mind that they can die instantly on anyone's whim, they started writing letters to close ones. Sparta sweat dropped seeing them behaving like this. They took three hours to calm down after that they divide house chores within themselves, Kala Warner was on cleaning duty, Martel was on cooking duty and Kelly was on laundry. Around evening the doorbell rang. Kelly opened the door and saw Sana and Akeno standing. Sana sensed that she was a fallen angel and was about to attack. Kelly, please don't kill me, I just got here today. I am working as a maid here, I am too young to die. Sana and Akeno both sweat dropped on her antics and entered the house and found Sparta sitting on the couch and watching Netflix. Sparta noticed them and paused the TV. Sparta, well about time you came. Sana, when did you get maids? Sparta, just today, Azazel brought them. Akeno, well that is nice. Sparta, where is your stuff? Sana, we will move it directly into our room via magic. Akeno, show us our room we have a lot of work to do. Sparta got up from his couch and showed them their room. Since Amy and Tia lived in Sparta's room all the rooms were empty in his house except his room. The maids will be staying in the guest rooms for now. Amy came home and was also surprised by the maids. Every member of the house asked the maids to call them by their names. Soon dinner was prepared by Martel. The food was not as amazing as Sparta's but it was still good. Sana and Akeno were really happy that they were finally able to move in with Sparta. After dinner Amy, Tia, and Sparta went to their room to sleep. Sana and Akeno went to their respective rooms. The maids also completed their jobs and went to sleep. Chapter 54, Fried Chicken Since the maids joined the Sparta household one week has passed. Everything was normal. Next week it was Sana's 18th birthday Sparta and everyone else had decided to surprise her with a party. Sparta woke up in the morning and went to do his daily workout. After that, he came inside to take a bath and saw Martel preparing breakfast for them. Soon everyone joined the table to have breakfast, except Amy, she left early for Takamagahara. 
After breakfast, Sparta took his car from the garage and everyone hopped in. At first, when everyone saw Sana and Akeno coming to school in Sparta's car they were shocked. There were a lot of rumors spreading in the school regarding them, but none of them cared about those. After they reached school Sparta parked the car and they entered the school. Sana went to SCR and Akeno went to Ork. Sparta and Tia went towards the class, entering the class Sparta noticed Rias. She had a look of despair on her face. Sana and Akeno came before the teacher entered the class, Sparta became bored as usual. The bell rang meaning that it was lunch break. Sparta was walking towards the cafeteria along with Tia when he suddenly noticed something. He sensed a strong devil appearing in the orc. It was strong if compared to Sana or Rias but for Sparta, it was another insect. Then Sparta remembered that after the Fallen Angels fiasco Razor will be coming. That meant it was Grafia who came into Orc meaning Razor would be joining soon. Sparta decided to drop by Orc so he can warn Razor about Akeno and Chiron. What happens to Rias he doesn't care, he knew Issei will fight later with Razor. He told Tia that they have to go to Orc first. While they were walking towards Orc Sparta sensed another devil to appear inside Orc. He entered the Orc building with Tia and went upstairs. He was about to knock but he sensed that Razor's peerage also came. He knocked on the door and it was opened by Chiron. Sparta and Tia entered the room and Razor's whole peerage was scared. Grafia was also worried. Grafia, Sparta-sama may I know what business do you have here? Sparta, I sensed some unknown devils in the orc so I came. Grafia, Rias samas fiancé has come to discuss the date of marriage with her. Sparta, who is her fiancé this blondie? Blondie? My name is Razor Fenix. Sparta, well your name upgraded its fried chicken from now on. So what has been decided? Grafia, they will be participating in a rating game, if Rias Sama wins then she will be not marrying Razor Sama and if Razor Sama wins then he will marry Rias Sama. Everyone in Rias's peerage was laughing hearing that. If it was someone else Razor would have lashed out or started making comments on his girl but he clearly knew what Sparta could do to him so he decided to stay quiet. A girl from Razor's peerage was peeking on Sparta with red cheeks, she gained courage and came forward. She had blonde hair like Razor, her hair was tied into two ponytails and its style was like a drill. Sparta knew who she was, she was Ravel Fenix. Ravel, it's nice to meet you Sparta-sama, my name is Ravel Fenix. Sparta, it is also nice to meet you Ravel but tell are you somehow related to fried chicken here? Ravel, I am his sister. I wanted to meet you from the party but with all the announcements I was unable to. Sparta didn't say anything and looked at Razor with disgust and took out his phone and started dialing a number. Fried chicken, what are you doing? Sparta, calling the FBI, how can someone normal keep her sister in his peerage? Ravel, Sparta-sama it is not his mistake, I joined him to gain experience so someday I can manage my own peerage. Sparta, no need for Sama, just call me Sparta. Tia. Stop flirting and do what you came to do I am hungry. Sparta, oh yes I forgot, listen clearly fried chicken Akeno is my fiancé and Chiron is my sister if you touch them I will kill you slowly and painfully. I don't care what you do with Rias after you win the rating game but stay away from Akeno and Chiron. Do you understand? Razor was scared of Sparta, he didn't want to incur his wrath. He may be arrogant but he knew who he shouldn't provoke. Devil Kings can easily beat him and Sparta could easily beat Devil Kings. So he clearly knew the difference in their strength, at first, he had decided otherwise but now he can only accept or he will lose his life. He was thinking that Sparta at least didn't stop him to get Rias. Fried chicken, yes I understand. Sparta, well Tia our job is done let's go. Ravel, Sparta could be meet sometime else, I would like to make some cakes for you. Sparta, yes we can, here take this magic circle you can contact me with it from the underworld. By Ravel take care if the fried chicken does something indecent to you call me. I will kill him. Saying that Sparta and Tia walked out of Orc and Grafia heaved out a sigh. Issei was angry with Sparta when he said that he didn't care what happens to Rias. But Rias didn't mind that because she knew that she wasn't Sparta's fiancé so it was common that he would not care about her. Sparta was eating food in the cafeteria with Tia while he remembered something. Sparta, shit. I forgot to ask Grafia for VIP seats. Well I will ask Sana for that. Chapter 55, A Certain Lily After school, Sparta went home with Tia because Akeno had work to do Orc and Sana had work in SCR. Before dinner, Sana, Akeno and Amy came back home. Sparta, Akeno when is your rating game? Akeno, in 10 days. Sparta, 
Sana can you get me VIP seats? Sana, yes I can, it is simple. Amy, can I come too? I always wanted to see a rating game. Sana, I can ask my sister to arrange that. Amy, I am looking forward to it. After that everyone freshened up and started eating dinner. While eating dinner Sparta sensed a huge amount of power coming from near his house. Sparta got up from the table. Amy, what is that power? Tia, I know that power. Sparta, all of you stay inside I am going to with it. Sparta washed his hands and got out of his house and found a small girl with black hair standing on the road, the small girl had pointy ears and deep black eyes. She was wearing a gothic Lolita dress. Sparta knew who she was or what it was. It was Ophis the infinite dragon god. Ophis, I have been watching you. Sparta, I was not expecting you to show yourself so soon. Ophis, I have come for you, I want you. Sparta, sorry I am not interested in small girls. Ophis, are you not scared of me? Sparta, no, but I am really excited to fight you. I always wanted to fight a dragon god. Ophis, I didn't come to fight. I came to invite you to my team, help me defeat Baka Red. Sparta, I may defeat him someday but I will do it on my own I don't want a team. Ophis, why defeat Baka Red on your own? He didn't take your home. Sparta, he is in the top I want that position. Ophis, I don't understand. Sparta, Ophis you want some ice cream? Ophis cutely tilted her head in confusion. Ophis, what is ice cream? Will it help me defeat Baka Red? Sparta, no it is a food come with me, come with me just don't hurt anybody. Ophis, if nobody tries to hurt me, I will not hurt them. After that Sparta came inside the house followed by Ophis. Amy and Tia were scared of seeing Ophis and the rest of the house members didn't know who she is, so they didn't react like Amy or Tia. Sparta gave Ophis a seat and went to the fridge and took an ice cream and gave to Ophis and showed her how to eat it. She started to lick the ice cream. To Sana, Akeno, and the maids she was really cute. Ophis, this is nice, I like it. Tia, is this really happening? Amy, seem to. I never expected it to be like this, this is quite surprising. Sana, do you know her? Tia, she is Ophis the infinite dragon god. Hearing that Sana, Akeno, and the maid's mind shattered into a lot of little pieces. They always became pale and started shaking. Ophis finished her ice cream and started looking at Sparta and then looked at other people in the room. Ophis, I want another, I don't know your name. Sparta, my name is Sparta, sit here I bring another one. Sparta got up again went to bring another ice cream for her. Ophis, your house is odd. You have devils, fallens, a dragon, and a goddess. I have never seen anything like this. Sparta, I don't discriminate any race. Ophis, why won't you join me? Sparta, I don't like to work in a team and I definitely don't like to work under someone. Ophis, if I had a body like that goddess would you accept? Sparta, what does that have to do here? Ophis, you said you are not interested in a small girl, so I thought of making myself older. Amy got a tick mark hearing that, but decided not to provoke it. Sparta, let's fight, if you win I will join you. Ophis, what happens if I lose? Sparta, I will not join you and I get your position as world's second strongest. Ophis, but I don't want to fight now, we will fight later and make you join me. Sparta, good luck whenever you are ready. Ophis finished her ice cream and vanished from the room. Everyone released a big sigh except Sparta. Amy and Tia came near Sparta. Amy, why are you so reckless? Always wanting to get into a fight. Sparta, don't worry nothing will happen. Amy. We all are worried she is different she is a dragon god. Sparta, that makes it more fun. Tia, he will not listen, so what did she want? Sparta, she wanted me to join her team to fight Great Red. Amy, I have heard about that group like that, they are gathering members from all factions. Akeno, Sparta will you be fine? Sana, you should worry about yourself first, you have a rating game in 10 days. A slash N. Only one chapter for today I have to take care of some stuff, sorry for breaking the promise. Comment. 43 Comment. Vote. Chapter 56, Sana's Birthday. The next morning Akino had packed her stuff and ready to leave. Yesterday she had already informed Sparta that she would be leaving to train with Rias. 
Sparta kissed her and asked her to stay safe and take care. After that, she made a magic circle and teleported to Rias. After that Sparta, Tia and Sana got ready to go to school. They all went to school. During lunch break, Sana decided to talk with her sister about Amy also wanting to see the rating game. Sana made a magic circle and called her sister. Sira, Sotan did you miss me? I missed you so much. Sana, I called you regarding an important matter. Sira, tell me Sotan what your big sister can do for you. Sana, Lady Amaterasu heard about the rating game and she became interested. She wants to see it too. Sira, I will talk with Sertskschan then I will let you know. Sana, okay Onisama. Sana disconnected the call and Sira and went to meet Sertsks in office. Sira, Sertsks Chan Lady Amaterasu heard about the rating game and became interested she wants to watch the match. Sertsks, you are in the management of foreign affairs, so it is up to you. But if you decide to let her come ask her to bring guards because a goddess in the underworld will make a lot of devils unhappy. Sira, I think Sparta will be accompanying her, so there is no need for guards. Sertsks, that makes sense she is his fiancé and no one would dare to hurt her if Sparta is around. Sira, so I will personally invite Lady Amaterasu tomorrow. The next day Sira herself came to Sparta's house to invite Amy to the rating game. She stayed with them for dinner. Sana's birthday was in four days, Sparta told Sira that they would be keeping a surprise party for Sana. Sparta gave Sira to keep Sana busy on that day so she won't be getting any idea of what they were doing. Four days passed in a blink off an eye it was Sana's birthday today. Sira made Sana to drop school that day and took her to shopping so that she won't be getting any ideas. Sira brought a lot of things for Sana. It was almost evening when Sira got a call from Sparta saying that they were ready. After that Sira brought Sana back home, Sana started suspecting them long ago that they were planning something. Sana opened the door with her key and entered the house and found that the house was completely dark. Suddenly all the lights turned on and party poppers went off. Everyone, happy birthday Sana. Sparta invited Sana's parents, her full peerage, Akeno, Chiron, and Rias. Rias wasn't in Sparta's favorable people list but he still invited her thinking that Sana would like Rias being present there. They were still friends and Sparta didn't want them to separate them just because he didn't like Rias. Sana was really happy that everyone prepared all this for her. After calming down she cut the cake and everyone started congratulating her. After that everyone started giving her gifts. When Sparta's time came he gave her a devil sword which would increase the wielder's speed and strength. Seeing that Sana was really happy. It had another hidden function which Sparta didn't tell her, it would notify Sparta of Sana's location whenever she is in danger. Sparta didn't want her to walk into any dangerous situations knowingly thinking that Sparta will come if there is some danger. After everyone was done giving Sana her gifts it was time to eat. Since today was a special occasion Sparta made all the food himself. Everyone was delighted by the food Sparta has made. It was the best food they have ever eaten. After that party was over and everyone started to leave, Sana thanked everyone that they did this for her. The maids were cleaning the plates and house so Sparta decided to take a bath and then go to his room. Sparta was laid on his bed only wearing his boxers waiting for Amy and Tia to join him. Someone knocked on his door and entered his room. It was Sana she was wearing a bathrobe Sparta got confused seeing her dressed like that. Sparta what are you doing here? Where are Amy and Tia? Sana, T they won't be joining you today, for tonight I have you for myself completely. After saying that Sana opened the bathrobe and she was wearing s asterisk xy black lingerie. Sparta gulped hard seeing her. He didn't expect Sana to surprise him like that. Sana, I I have waited long for this. Make me yours. Sparta didn't say anything and made a space barrier around the room so that no one could hear from outside. Soon sounds of love and pleasure filled the room. The next morning Sparta woke up and found Sana sleeping over his chest. After some time she also woke up and Sparta kissed her. They went to take a bath, they had a little fun in the bath too. After the long bath, both of them came downstairs and found Amy and Tia mischievously looking at them. Sana was really embarrassed her cheeks were completely red. They took a seat to have breakfast. Amy, so how was your first night Sana? Sana. Please don't ask the details but it was really nice. Tia, well Sparta is good in that department. Sparta, please keep the bedroom's talk in the bedroom. Amy, you are also embarrassed hearing that that is so cute. Sparta, please let me eat my food peacefully. They had their breakfast with these small teasing here and there. The maids had red cheeks hearing them. 
The rest of the day passed quite peacefully for them, all of them just lazed around except Sana. Sana was freaking out with all her pending paperwork, so she decided to complete those. At night when Sparta went to sleep, he found one person on his bed. It was Sana, she also decided that she would sleep with him. Comment 43 Comment Vote Chapter 57, Rating Game, 1 Toa slash N, Firstly I want to say that I am trying really hard to put expressions but I am unable to do it. I have tried to write this chapter a little bit different please tell me if you like this o or not. According to your feedback, I will write the next chapters. Today was the rating game between Rias and Razor. Sira was going to come to take Amy and Sparta to the underworld. Tia was uninterested in their fight they were pathetically weak according to her. Amy just wanted to see the system of rating games and Sparta wanted to see because of Akino and Chiron. Suddenly a magic circle appeared in their room and Sira came out. Sira, Sparta did you miss me? Where is my cute little sister? Sira asked them in her usual cheerful manner. Sparta, I and Sana both missed you and she had already left for SCR. I heard she will be broadcasting the game to the underworld. Sira, my cute little sister has grown so much. Lady Amaterasu the game will start in an hour we should leave. Amy, we are ready s let's go. Sira made a magic circle and all three of them stepped into the magic circle and teleported to a place where the fight is going to take place. They appeared in a VIP area, only high class devil families were present there. Amy, where is this place? This is not the underworld. Sparta, this is the dimensional gap, I was expecting more of nothingness. Sira. We have made a special dimension in the dimensional gap for the rating game. Sparta you are correct there is nothing in the dimensional gap, we have made a replica of your school for the battle. Sparta, well I have to agree that you devils work diligently. While they were talking Sertsx also came to greet them along with Lord and Lady Gremory. Sertsx, Lady Amaterasu it is nice to see you, I hope you don't have any complaints. Amy, it is also nice to meet you Sertsx Lucifer and don't worry everything is fine. Sparta. Well you devils are sure serious in all this stuff. Zidicus, we give a lot of importance to all this stuff what we can say. While they were talking Rias and Riser has already moved into the battlefield into their respective strongholds. Vele Lana, looks the battle is going to start soon Razor and Rias are on the battlefield. After that everyone was asked to take seats that the game will begin shortly. Mates were providing drinks and snacks to everyone. Sparta took whiskey and Amy took tea, they were sitting near the Gremory family and Fenex family. Citri family also joined them. Vele Lana, it is nice to meet you Sparta, I wanted to meet you for a long time. Sparta, sorry, do I know you? Vele Lana, where are my manners my name is Vele Lana Gremory, I am Rias's mother. I always wanted to meet the person saved Shuri she is my good friend. Sparta, it is nice to meet you too, Lady Vele Lana. Don't worry it is no big deal. After that. They were having small conversations when suddenly Grafia's voice was heard over the announcement system. Grafia, good morning everyone I am Grafia Lucy Phage Queen of Sertsx's Lucifer and Maid of Gremory Household. I will be the announcer of this rating game. This rating game is between Rias Gremory and Razor Fenex. If Rias Sama wins she marriage contract between them will be null and void and if Razor Sama wins the marriage will continue. The base of Rias Sama is Orc and for Razor Sama it is SCR. The battle will begin in 5 minutes after the match starts the first 15 minutes no attacks will be allowed. After 5 minutes a bell rang which signaled the start of the match. Rias, POV. Akino, what should we do? Rias, if they want to attack us they will need to move from the open field or the gymnasium. So attack from the open is ruled out, they would surely move in from the gymnasium. Issei and Chiron you will be positioned there in Akino when the time comes to blow the gymnasium with your magic. Kaiba if they try to sneak in towards us from some place else you intercept them. Asia, you stay with me here. Akeno, Yuto, and Chiron place several traps around the building. I watched them as they leave to place the traps in the surroundings. I alone can't take on Razor, if Issei and Chiron support me there might be a chance. Akeno also needs to defeat Razor's queen or we will be at a huge disadvantage. Soon everyone returned and the bell also rang signaling the start of the match. Rias. Everyone move out according to plan. Stay safe everyone. I will be monitoring from here if something changes I will inform you accordingly. Issei and Chiron have reached the gymnasium and as I thought they are moving in from there. If I am correct one of them is a rook and rest are pawns. Please be careful both of you. 
Issei starts to fight with the three pawns and Chiron took on the rook. Issei touches all the girls and uses some technique to rip off all their clothes. This is despicable, but the pawns are now immobilized. Chiron also manages to immobilize the rook. Rias, Chiron, Issei get out of there Akino will blow up the gymnasium. Hearing me Issei and Chiron immediately ran out of there and Akino used her lightning to destroy the gymnasium. Graphia, three pawns and one rook of Razor Sama have been retired. Rias, well done you guys. In VIP watching room. Amy, that move is truly despicable, how can this be allowed? Sparta, even though I don't approve of the move but everything is fair in love and war. Again he has proved that how much of a pervert he is. Back in the battlefield. Rias, POV. Kaiba has also intercepted three pawns coming towards the orc. Looks like I was right, they were trying to sneak in. Rias, Kaiba please be careful. You are outnumbered. Kaiba, I will be careful, don't worry. Kaiba fights them and manages to defeat all three of them. They all turned into light particles and disappeared. Graphia, three pawns of Razor Sama have been retired. Rias, good work Kaiba. Issei, Chiron slowly make way towards the enemy base. As I finished saying the place where Chiron was standing exploded. Rias, what happened Chiron are you okay? Chiron. Somehow I managed to dodge, though I have sustained some damage on my left side. Rhea saw Chiron was standing near the crater with slight burns on her left hand. You Belena, Aira. Aira. I didn't expect that you will be able to dodge that. This is bad, they cannot fight with her. Only Akeno can defeat her. Issei, get down here. Stop fighting like a coward. Stop Issei don't provoke her, she was about to attack Issei but a lightning stopped her. So Akeno you came. Rias, Akeno only you can defeat her, please be careful. Akeno tells Chiron and Issei to move towards the SCR while she takes on Yubelina. Akeno is winning, now quickly eliminate her. Wait what is that? Fenex tears? This is truly bad, she drank the Fenex tear and she turned the tables and the worst outcome happened Akeno lost. Rias, no. Akeno. She disappeared in light particles. Graphia. Rias Sama's queen has been retired. Chapter 58, Raiding Game, 2, and Marriage Crashing. Sparta, well that does it. Velelana, what do you mean by that? Sparta, well queen is an important piece, Razor had a full peerage but Rias didn't. To win her all members had to defeat more than one member. Akeno was unable to defeat Razor's queen so she won't be sitting quietly. Velelana, I understand. In the battlefield. Rias. POV. This is the worst situation possible, Akeno was defeated without taking out Yubelina. Now only one thing can be done I need to face Razor myself now. Rias, Kaiba where are you? Kaiba, I am moving towards the SCR. Rias, find Issei and Chiron and bring them to SCR. I am going towards SCR with Asia. Kaiba, no Rias don't do this, we have to think carefully. Rias, I have already decided. After saying I took Asia with me and started to move towards SCR. Graphia, two pawns and one knight of Razor Sama have retired. Rias, why is Razor standing in the open? He also has a bishop with him. Razor, Rias I didn't expect to you come directly to me. Rias, I will defeat you myself. Razor, losing your queen have messed up your brain, you think you can defeat me? Don't make me laugh. After that I attack with my destruction power. It hit him on his chest. That is going to hurt, no way you are coming out of that intact. Graphia, Razor Sama's one rook, one knight and one bishop have retired. Razor, you have grown stronger. I cannot believe my eyes, Razor was already healed. He made a ball of fire and attacked me. RIA, but before the attack reached me someone else interfered, both the attacks clashed and an explosion happened. Issei, Rias Senpai we have come to support you. Rias. So you guys made it here. What about his queen? Yobelina, I didn't think that you will miss Miria's Gremory. Kaiba, I will hold her, you attack Razor. After that Kaiba started attacking Yobelina, he will be able to hold her for some time. I can't lose this now I have come too far. I attacked Razor with my power and Issei attacked him using Dragon Shot. After the attack collided an explosion happened but Razor came out while he was healing. Chiron moved towards him and attacked him in hand to hand but she was kicked away. Graphia, Rias Sama's knight has retired. 
I was shocked hearing that and got distracted and looked over towards Kaiba and saw Yubelina making a magic circle. She launched the magic and an explosion happened. Graphia, Rias Sama's rook has been retired. What just happened? So I never had the chance to defeat him. I looked over towards Razor and found him standing over Issei's beaten up body. He was still conscious by a thread. Razor, I didn't expect this much fight from you. But now it's over surrender yourself or I will kill your pawn, then your bishop in front of you. Issei, do don't do it Rias. I looked over to Issei and then Asia, she was really scared she was about to cry. What should I do? Seeing me indecisive Razier started to make a ball of fire it was huge and pointed at Issei. I made up my mind. Rias, I give up, you win. Please spare my pawn and bishop. Graphia, the winner is Razor Sama. In VIP watching room. Sparta, well that wraps it. Amy I am going to visit Akeno and Chiron are you coming? Amy, yes off kus. After that Sparta asked a maid where the infirmary was and she showed them the way. Sparta and Amy entered the room and the maid left. Sparta, Akeno how are you feeling? Akeno, I am fine just a little bit tired. Amy, Akeno you fought well. Train harder from now on. Sparta, she is right. Akeno, but still we lost. Sparta, don't worry so much you gave your best that is the most important thing. Amy found Chiron's bed was next to Akeno. She was still unconscious. Amy, Akeno how is Chiron? Akeno, the doctor said that she is fine but she was completely exhausted so she might take some time to wake up. Amy, that is nice to hear. Akeno, Sparta can you please do me a favor? Sparta, tell me, I will try my best. Akeno, please save Rias from the marriage. I know you don't like her but please do it for me. Sparta, that won't be needed. Someone will save her, but if he fails I will step in. I cannot see you making that face Akeno. Akeno, who are you talking about? Sparta, you will know. After that Rias came barging in to check them, Sertsk's and Gremory family was also with her. Zidikas, Lady Amaterasu and Sparta we would like to invite you to our daughter's marriage. Sparta, well we can stick together till the marriage. In marriage ceremony. There were a lot of high class devils present there, drinking and chatting with everyone else. There were a lot of female devils hitting on Sparta but he was dodging everyone. Soon Sparta found the Satri family and Sana was also with them. He took Amy with him to talk with them, they were completely respectful towards Amy. They were making small conversations. Soon Rias appeared on the stage along with Razor she had a complete face of despair, her eyes were completely void of life or hope. Suddenly someone busted through the gate and as Sparta thought it was Issei. Issei, let her go a hole, her virginity belongs to me. Razor, how did you get in guards kill this peasant? The guards surrounded him but they were put out of commission by rest of Rias's peerage. Kaiba, so you finally decided to show up. Akeno, glad you came. Chiron, but you are still the worst. Rias, what are you doing? Please just let it go I have resigned to my fate. Issei, I will never let go, I still have to prove my worth to you. Razor, I challenge you to a fight. Razor, what do you want to do? I have already defeated you. Well this is quite an entertainment. Suddenly a voice came from behind them. Rias, brother why are you here? Sertsks, well it is my sister's wedding of course I would come. Razor, Sertsks sama what do you mean by that? Sertsks, well I wanted to say that my sister is inexperienced in raiding games so I was thinking that they deserve another chance. Razor, but won't that mean the system is meaningless? Sertsks, that's why I said that it is entertainment. Razor, very well, I will fight with him. After all, it was wished by the Devil King himself. Sertsks, so you boy from my sister's peerage tell me what do you want if you win? Razor, but he is just a lowly reincarnated devil there is no need to give him something. Sertsks, doesn't matter what his status is he must be awarded accordingly. So tell me boy what do you want? Issei, I just want that Rias would be allowed to marry whoever she wants. After that, a battlefield was prepared for them and they fought. Issei defeated Razor exactly how it was shown in the anime. He used holy water to defeat Razor. Rias was now free from her marriage contract. They used the griffin given by Sertsks to return to the human world. Issei was carrying Rias like a princess. Sparta, that was anticlimactic. Chapter 59, Bored. 
one month has passed since the raiding game. Life was going completely normal for Sparta which was tremendously boring for him. He had nobody to fight with or battle with, he could always fight with Tia to pass his time but now she was not strong enough for him. Tia nowadays evaded his offers for a fight because she didn't like the feeling of getting beaten up. He was expecting that Afiz would come for a fight but she also didn't come. He was living happily with his fiancés. He didn't do the deed with Akino, he was still waiting for her to turn 18. Sparta had blank eyes while he was having breakfast. Amy, babe you don't look so good. Sparta, no I am not good, I want to fight someone strong. Did you tell your brother that I want to fight him? Amy, I asked him but he is busy with his duties. Tia, I think Azazel was right when he told us that you and your brother had a head injury that made you like this. Sparta, if I agree will you fight me? Tia, I love myself as much as I love you, so I am going to pass. Sana, why don't you challenge Sertsk's Lucifer? Sparta, you think I didn't try? He always puts up a condition like I have to take his place if I win. Akino, so why don't you settle for a draw? Amy, believe me sister draw is not an option for our Sparta. Sana, have you tried Azazel? Sparta, that damn fallen is no good always making some lame excuses. Tia, you know what? I think you are trying to find some new gods to humiliate. Sparta, I don't do that, maybe a little bit. Akeno, what about your brother? Sparta, if I fight him he will lose and get depressed again. Sana, you are a lost cause. Sparta, but all of you love me for what I am. Amy slash Tia slash Sana slash Akeno, he he. That we do darling. Everyone finished their breakfast and Sparta got in his car along with Tia, Sana and Akeno and drove off to school. Amy teleported to Takamagahara and the mates resumed their duties. After five minutes Sparta reached school with them and parked his car. All the students again started their usual gossip regarding them and as always they shrugged it off. Sparta was in class getting so bored that he wanted to die when he suddenly felt holy energy enter the town. The energy was so huge that it didn't belong to any normal angels, it had to a seraph. Sparta, it is time for holy sword's arc, so heaven sent a seraph. Looks like butterfly effects had already started to take place. During the lunch break, Sparta was in the cafeteria along with Tia when Sana and Tsubaki came to join them. Sana, we have a problem. Sparta, let me guess, a problem related to a strong angel in town. Sana, how did you know? Sparta, who do you think I am? Sana, the angel came with two exorcists who are carrying holy swords, they want to talk with us. The angel didn't show itself, but he or she is strong that much even I can sense. Sparta, so do you want me to take care of them? I haven't fought anyone seriously for some time. Sana, I want you to be there when we talk with them and please don't try to cause a war. Sparta, no promises babe, if they get on my nerves they won't see tomorrow's sun. Sana, that's fair, come to Orc after school I will be already there. Sparta, Tia do you want to come too? Tia. I will pass, I have a series to watch on Netflix. After that Sana and Tsubaki left them with their food. After finishing their food Sparta and Tia to their class. After the school finished Sparta got up from his seat and went towards Orc. Sparta knocked on the door and was invited inside. After entering he found that Sana was present there with her full peerage and Rias was also there with her full peerage. Rias, Sparta welcome, I am glad that you could join us. Sparta. Whatever I was bored and Sana asked me to come so I came. A strong angel that could be real fun. Sana, please heed my request, don't start a war. Sparta, I will try not to don't worry. So when are they coming? Rias, they would be coming any minute. Just as Rias finished her sentence Sparta noticed the angel near Orc along with the exorcists. Sparta could feel the holy energy coming from the holy swords but it was incomparable to the Excalibur he had in Gob. Soon the door was knocked and they were allowed to come in. When they came in Spadra was able to recognize the seraph. Her name was Gabriel the strongest woman in heaven. They took a seat on the couch in front of Sparta, Sana and Rias. The exorcists were wearing white robes. One of them was carrying a huge sword which was wrapped by clothes. They took off their hoods and Sparta remembered from the anime they were Zenovia and Irina. Sparta, I didn't expect that heaven would send Gabriel. All the devils present there were shocked hearing that the angel in front of them was a seraph. They were so glad that Rias and Sana called Sparta to be present there. But the exorcists were not happy seeing how Sparta called out a seraph's name. 
they were about to take out their weapons to attack Sparta. Zenobia, watch your mouth human. You are not even worthy to take her name. Irina, you are wearing a cross, you are a believer of God how can you sit along with devils? Sparta, firstly I am a devil I assure you and don't threaten me, I don't take kindly to that. Zenobia, impossible, you are lying. Gabriel, I am quite surprised that you were able to recognize me, and girls he is telling the truth he is a devil. I am here because of him. Sparta, you are here for me? I am really flattered. Gabriel, believe me I am here for you. Sparta, so why don't we go on a date and leave this matter in their hands? Gabriel, what is a date you are speaking about? Sparta, a date is when a boy and girl go out together to watch movies, do shopping, eat food and have fun that is called a date. Gabriel, then I would love to go with you, I always wanted to visit Japan. Everyone was shocked hearing that Gabriel was ready to go on a date with him so easily. But it made the exorcists even more angrier. Sana, Sparta please stop flirting with her. Zenovia, devil, stop corrupting Gabriel Sama or I will strike you down right here right now. Sparta, with the toys, you are carrying. Irina, you dare to insult our Excaliburs? Sparta, they are just toys against me and you are insects. Zenovia, I have heard enough, now die in the name of God. Gabriel, please don't fight, we don't want to cause trouble here. Girls he can defeat all of us combined without breaking a sweat. I just came to request Sparta-sama here that he lets us do our job here. Zenovia and Irina were shocked hearing Gabriel, how can they not be? Gabriel was an archangel and she was saying that a devil could defeat her without breaking a sweat how strong was he? Sparta, Gabriel please call me Sparta. So what is the job you are talking about? Gabriel, recently three of the Excaliburs were stolen by a fallen angel and he came to Kyoha with those swords. We want to find the swords and acquire them back, but we don't want the devils to interfere. Sparta, well you can do whatever you want to do, but like you said this is a devil territory so if we find the matter getting out of your hands I will interfere. Zenovia, are you sure? Do you want to disregard church? Sparta, the same church which allowed the holy swords project to be conducted. Irina, are you mocking us? Sparta, hell yeah I am mocking you. What are you going to do? Zenovia, are you declaring war on church? Sparta, believe me it won't be a war, it will be a massacre. Zenovia lost her temper and was about to attack Sparta but Gabriel stopped her. Gabriel, did you not understand what I said before? And I agree with him if you go war with him church will be destroyed. Sparta I agree with your terms, I myself would contact you if we need help. Sparta, do you know which fallen angel was responsible? Irina, we believe it was Coke Beale. Sparta, this is interesting. Chapter 60, Archangels Gabriel, I don't understand how is that interesting? Sana, please Gabriel Sama ignore him, he is a lost cause. Gabriel, forgive me Sparta for not noticing before, what can I do to help you? Sparta, straight face, not cool Sana. By the way Gabriel I am completely fine. Gabriel, Sparta there is someone who wants to meet you. He wants to talk to you privately. Sparta, we can talk in my home freely. Gabriel, okay then please lead the way. Irina, Gabriel Sama please tell me that you are actually not thinking of going to a devil's house. Sparta, I see you are thinking of me as evil because of my race. If I have been really evil you would be already dead. But interfere with me once more and you won't be seeing the next day. Gabriel, you girls need to apologize to him, we are trying to form a friendly bond here but you are continuously antagonizing him. Is this what they teach you in church? Zenovia and Irina were shocked hearing that from a seraph, they never imagined that a seraph would take the side of a devil. They were not sure what to do, all their teachings would be insulted. They decided to keep quiet. Gabriel, didn't you hear me? I told you to apologize to him. Irina slash Zenovia, we are sorry. Gabriel, now this is out of the way, let's go. Zenovia, with all respect Gabriel Sama we don't want to visit a devil's house. We would be going to this town's church. Gabriel, you can go there, but since I am commanding the mission I order you that if anything goes out of hand you are free to ask for assistance from the devils. Irina, we understand. After that Zenovia and Irina left the orc. Sparta looked towards the devils and found them sweating. Sparta, are you guys okay? Sana, staying in the presence of a seraph is causing us a big headache. Sparta, 
well I will go with Gabriel, Sana, and Akeno are you going to come with me? Akeno, I still have contracts to complete, I will come later. Sana, I too have paperwork to complete. Sparta, well knock yourselves out, be safe out there. Gabriel let's go. After that Sparta led Gabriel to his car. Gabriel's eyes were sparkling seeing his car. Gabriel, is this your car? I always wanted to ride one. Sparta, well this your lucky day. After that Sparta and Gabriel entered the car and drove towards his house. Soon they reached Sparta's home. During the whole drive, Gabriel was sticking her head out of the window and squealing like a child. Sparta found that it was really cute, he decided to make Gabriel his fiancé but he didn't want to force her or anything. Sparta parked his car inside the garage and entered the house along with Gabriel. Gabriel entered the house and got shocked seeing the fallen angels working as a maid. The maids were able to feel her holy power and got scared of her. Seeing them Sparta chuckled a little. Sparta, don't need to get scared, she will not harm you. Can you prepare some snacks for us another guest is coming. By the way, where is Tia? Martel, she is watching the TV. Then Gabriel moves to the next room with Sparta and she was shocked to see the woman lying on the sofa. Gabriel recognized her immediately. Tiamat also recognized her. Tiamat, Gabriel, long time no see. How have you been? Gabriel, I am fine how are you? Tia, I am also fine. After that Sparta and Gabriel took a seat on the couch. Gabriel, I will call him now. Sparta, it's okay with me. After that Gabriel made a magic circle and she told someone to come to their current location. Suddenly the room was filled with blinding light and a young man appeared. He had blonde hair and was wearing golden colored armor. Sparta knew who he was, he was Michael. Michael, Sparta it is nice to meet you, I have been waiting for some time to speak with you. Sparta, it is also nice to meet you. Michael, Tiamat long time no see, how have you been? Tia, what can I say I am living my life it is also nice to meet you. Then the maids entered the room with snacks while shivering. They were really scared for their lives. They were standing in front of two archangels. Michael, I would like to talk with you privately. Sparta, let's move to my room. Call a Warner please bring the food there. After that Sparta got up from his seat and led Michael and Gabriel to his room. Kala Warner was following them and she placed the snacks on the table as soon as possible and left the room. After she left the room Sparta flicked his fingers and a barrier was placed all around the room. Michael and Gabriel were shocked sensing that they were cut from the rest of the world. Michael, what did you do? Sparta, I placed a barrier that separates this room from the world. Gabriel, I have never seen anything like that. Sparta, so what did you wanted to talk about? Michael, do you know that heaven is currently in a crisis? Sparta, you mean the death of God. Michael and Gabriel were shocked hearing that he knew about God's death. Michael, how do you know about that? It is a closely guarded secret. Sparta, I know a lot of things such as a being on PAR with great red other than off eyes. Michael, you are quite scary if I have to say. I am really glad that you don't want to cause havoc. Sparta, how are you so sure? Michael, well I have lived long enough to at least know this much. Sparta, so what did you wanted to talk about? Michael, since God is dead I have been maintaining the system of heaven, but it is barely functioning me as a center. Lucifer was the first child of God so he can also power the system like me. Since you are pure as the original Lucifer you also have that power. If we both work together then we will be able to run the system at full capacity and even make changes to it. Sparta, well it will solve a lot of problems if we can do that. Michael, but there is a problem, none of us is super class being. One of us is needed to have super class power to control the system at full power. I cannot become a super class being because we were made by father and we cannot become stronger than him. Only Lucifer could reach that level, so you need to become a super class being. Sparta, well currently I am at peak Satan level, I could break through any moment but I need to have a serious fight or it will take about one year. Gabriel, that will be a problem, if we don't fix the system as soon as possible then a lot of things can go awry. Michael, fighting with us won't do you any good, you can defeat us easily. Sparta, why do you trust me so much? Michael, because my sister trusts you. Sparta, Gabriel how can you trust me? We have only met today. Michael, she has been watching you since you became immune to holy energy and she has grown a crush on you. Gabriel, brother you promised me that you won't say that. 
Michael, haha. Sorry, sister, it got out of my mouth in the flow. Sparta, that is a complete breach of my privacy. Hearing him Gabriel became sad and was about to cry, Sparta got scared and started petting her head. She immediately became happy and started to hum. Sparta, so why did you wait for so long? Michael, I wanted to know your personality before approaching. After I confirmed that I decided that you are worthy of my sister. Sparta, what are you talking about? I thought we were talking about you need my help with the system not handing your sister to me. Gabriel, Sparta don't you like me? If you don't want I won't ask again. Sparta, I would be lying if I decline, but I would like to know you better. Maybe go on a few dates. Gabriel, I am fine with it, I want to become one of your fiancés. I already know that you have other fiancés I don't mind sharing. Sparta, well I was not expecting that. Michael, so if you want to date my sister we need to access the system so that she won't fall because she loves you. Sparta, I also don't want to make her fall because she loves me. So do you know any opponents who can give me a challenge? Michael, I know a place where you can find an opponent but it can be dangerous. Sparta, that makes it more fun. Tell me where it is. Michael, you need to visit Scotland. Chapter 61, Scathatch Scatty. Sparta, are you talking about Scathatch? Michael, you know about her? Sparta, no I thought she was a myth. Michael, no she is real I can assure you but she exists on a different plane so not everyone can sense her or find her. Sparta, fighting her would be fun but if she is on a different plane how will I find her? Gabriel, don't worry Sparta we know the exact location where her plane coincides with ours. I will teleport you to that exact location but be careful of her, she is called God Slayer for a reason. Sparta, well that makes it more fun, it has been so long that I have a decent challenge. Michael so I will be leaving now, please take care of my sister. Sparta, at least wait till dinner. Michael, I am really sorry but I have to leave but I promise that next time I visit I would stay for dinner. Sparta, that will do for now. Sparta snaps his fingers and breaks the barrier and Michael vanishes in bright light. Sparta, let's go downstairs and see if Amy has come home or not. Gabriel, okay let's go. Sparta, take this pendant to keep it with you other people won't be able to sense your power. Sparta takes out a pendant from Gob and hands it over to Gabriel. Gabriel, this is nice, in this way your devil fiancés won't have a headache near me. After that, both of them went downstairs and Sparta saw that Amy had already come and was drinking tea while watching TV. Sparta, Amy how was your day? Amy, met. It was pretty normal babe. Gabriel, Lady Amaterasu it is really nice to meet you. Amy. It's been long since we met. Yes, nice to meet you too. After that Sparta told them what happened and that he would be visiting Scotland. Amy, so you are going to challenge Scathatch Scatty? Sparta, that is the plan. Tia, so you need a challenging situation to break through. Sparta, that is what I am saying. Amy, but her spear is dangerous it always pierces the heart. Sparta, well I can regenerate rapidly and I still have VM if things go south. Tia as long as you have VM no one can defeat you. Gabriel, what is VM? Sparta, promise me that you won't tell about this to anyone, not even your brother until I reveal it myself. Gabriel, I promise. Sparta, it is an ability of mine which lets me control or manipulate any form of vector freely as long as I have a medium. Amy, no matter how strong you are or what kind of attack you use it always contains a vector as long as Sparta can control it he can't be defeated. Gabriel in all her life heard about the most broken ability, she was completely shocked by how strong that ability was it was unbeatable. Soon dinner was prepared and Sana and Akeno also came back home. They entered the house and found Gabriel sitting and talking with the rest. They thought they would have a headache again but they were unable to sense any power from her which shocked them. Sparta, did you complete your work? Sana, yes I did. Akeno, everything went like butter. Sparta, that is nice to hear. Sana I will be leaving for Scotland tomorrow please get me excused from school. Sana, why are you suddenly leaving when a cotter level fallen angel is looming over our town? Sparta, don't worry about him, Tia and Gabriel will take care of him if I am unable to come. And I found something interesting there. Tia, he wants to fight with Scathatch Scatty. Akeno, wayot. I thought she was a myth. Sana, I also thought that. Sparta, 
I only found out today that she exists. Sana, well I trust you. After that, they ate dinner and Gabriel was given a guest room to sleep in. Sana, Amy and Tia had some fun in Sparta's room since Sparta will be leaving for a few days. The next morning they woke up and got freshened up. After that they all had breakfast and Gabriel made a magic circle that would teleport Sparta to the exact location where both the planes meet. Before teleporting Sparta was kissed by all of his fiancés as a sign of good luck. Sparta arrived at a place where there was nothing for about a half a mile radius. There was slit in the space in front of him. Sparta, after thinking that Sparta entered the slit and found himself in a land of nothingness. There was nothing as far as Sparta can see. The whole surface was like that he was standing on water but his feet didn't feel wet. Sparta activated his Rinnegan and started searching for any life signs and he found one. Without wasting any time he started walking in that direction and reached near it after walking 10 minutes. Sparta found a woman sitting in a meditation position, she was the most beautiful woman Sparta has ever seen. She was wearing purple skin-tight battle armor, her hair was maroon-colored and she had blood crimson barbed spear sitting on her lap. She opened her eyes sensing Sparta and her eyes were crimson red color. Scat Hatch, you are different from the others. Sparta, how am I different? Scat Hatch, I have seen of a lot of men in my whole life gods, angels, humans, heroes, fallen angels, devils but whoever they were whenever they saw me their eyes were filled with lust. But you, I only see admiration for my beauty in your eyes which is unusual for a devil. Sparta, well I like to please and thank you for your compliment. Scat Hatch, so why did you come to my land? Sparta, I came to fight with you. Scat Hatch, so you want to become my disciple? Sparta, I never said I want to become your disciple. Scat Hatch, so you wish to challenge me to a fight, so you are ready to face the consequences of the result? Sparta, yes I want to challenge you to a fight but do elaborate, what consequences? Scat Hatch, if you lose you die and if you win by any chance I will be yours. Sparta. Firstly I am not single and secondly how can you trust me so easily? Scat Hatch, I have no problem sharing and if you are a true warrior you can know everything about your opponent just by exchanging fists. Sparta, I have to agree with that on you. Scat Hatch, I want to ask you something what are those eyes I have never seen anything like that? Sparta, these eyes are my unique eyes which only I can have. Scat Hatch, fair enough. Now let's fight we have chatted for long. Sparta. Let's dance. Chapter 62, Super Devil Scat Hatch got up from her position and started rotating her spear, Sparta got enchanted by seeing her movements and skills. It clear as a day that she was in a different league from Sparta in weapons mastery. Sparta, I also have the same spear. Sparta took out Gobold from Gob which shocked Scat Hatch. She immediately found out that the devil standing in front of her was the descendant of Gilgamesh. Scat Hatch so not only you are a pure Lucifer but also a descendant of Gilgamesh this will be problematic. Sparta, how did you know about me being a pure Lucifer, a descendant of Gilgamesh I can understand. Scat Hatch, I don't have the title of God Slayer just for show, now enough talking. Scat Hatch kicked the ground attacked Sparta with tremendous speed. Sparta's eyes rotated and transformed into M's. The spear passed right through him, which shocked Scat Hatch but she didn't waver she increased her speed and kept attacking him. Sparta was a complete amateur with a spear. He regretted deciding to fight her with a spear as soon as Scat Hatch started attacking him. Sparta was in a tight bind he was unable to keep up with her speed of attacks and started receiving damage even with using Kamui. Sparta's body was full of scratches now but it was healing as fast as the damage was inflicted but it still was a huge problem for Sparta. He decided to make some distance between them. Sparta dropped all his guard and stood still Scat Hatch seeing that thrust her spear towards his heart with full force but as soon as she touched her she was thrown away with thrice the force she applied. She balanced herself in the air and landed 1-5m away from him. Scat Hatch, what was that? Sparta, defeat me and I will tell you. Using this chance Sparta changed his weapon from Gobble to Gram and kicked the ground and reached her, he activated Gob and started launching spears and swords at her at the same time he also attacked her with Gram. To get an opening Sparta used Amaterasu on her, she didn't know what it was but she dodged instinctively but it created an opening for Sparta and he was able to cut her on her shoulder. Scat Hatch jumped backward to make some distance. Scat Hatch, you are good, I have underestimated you. Sparta, let's keep going I might surprise you even more. Scat Hatch, then I guess I should kick it up by a notch. Scat Hatch opened a portal beside her and a sword came out of it. Sparta knew what sword it was. 
it was Cleom Scathe. Sparta again started attacking her with his previous strategy but this time she countered his Amaterasu by the darkness of her sword. The sword started releasing darkness and Sparta's eyes started rotating and changed into Rinnegan. Sparta, almighty push! Scathatch was thrown away by a tremendous force along with the darkness released from her sword. She tried to regain her sights it got blurry when she was hit by the force, it hit her really hard. Sparta, planetary devastation! The land around Scathatch started to crack and started to rise in the sky. Scathatch also rose from the ground and she was stunned and whatever she did was no use. She was soon entrapped within the land masses within the sky. She used her sword and tried to break free but it was of no use. Soon she was completely trapped within the mass floating on the sky. It was like a small planet, Sparta compressed it as much as he can. But he knew that it was not enough to defeat her. Sparta activated his Suzanu and three simple Suzanu formed which only had skin and muscles but no armor all of them had different hand signs and he always wanted to perform this move. Sparta, shattered heavens. Soon a gigantic meteor came down from the sky and directly dropped on the planet made by Sparta. The meteor had the size of a one mile radius. If it was dropped in Japan it would be completely destroyed. Sparta protected himself by using VM so that he won't be buried by the meteor or be caught up by his own attack. Sparta was breathing heavily and he was sure that if Scathatch wasn't dead she would at least be injured heavily. Sparta released a big sigh and closed his eyes to take a deep breath in. Sparta dropped his guard and immediately regretted it as a red crimson spear pierced his heart. Sparta spat out a lot of blood. He saw Scathatch walking out of the debris heavily injured her both arms were bent unnaturally, her whole body was bloodied and she was walking very difficultly. It was clear that one of her legs was also broken. Scathatch, you are far more stronger than me, but you were a greenhorn as soon as you thought that you won you dropped your guard which resulted in your downfall, in this case, your death. Sparta, I won't be so sure. Sparta held the spear and pulled it out of his chest and blood oozed out of his chest like a fountain. He threw away the spear and the wound started to heal at a rapid rate. Sparta spread out his wings and rose from the ground and transformed into something bestial. His head was surrounded by large ram-like horns with a second smaller set extending from the top. He had reptilian-like feet and all his wings transformed into spikes of red light. He now had twelve spikes which meant he ascended in super class. He also had a crown-like halo floating over his head which was also red. Sparta started to check out the changes on his body and boy he was satisfied. Scathatch was scared of the power that Sparta was releasing now. If Sparta was strong before now he was in a different league. Scathatch was badly injured and now she was sure that she could not defeat Sparta not even dream about it. Sparta, so this is the power of a super devil, I like it. I guess this is my true form. Sparta, Scathatch give up you cannot win now, even if you were in your best condition you would lose. Scathatch, you are right, I have lost. You beat me fair and square. Sparta flew down to the ground and reverted back to his normal form. He unfurled his wings and found out that he still had those light spikes in place of his wings and his halo would come out whenever he unfurled his wings. Sparta, well this was the best fight of my life. Scathatch, I agree with you. Sparta, so what now? Scathatch, since I have lost this world will collapse soon and I will stay here and disappear with it. Sparta saw that the dimension had started to collapse from the edges. Sparta, are you dumb, come with me you told me the consequences that if you lose you will become mine. Scathatch, I know you don't want me, I am broken see me I don't need your pity. Sparta, you are really stupid, I don't pity you. You are the most beautiful girl I have ever laid my eyes on you are not broken, you are not some toy. I will stand beside you until you heal again and I would never abandon you for anything. Sparta held her broken body and pulled her closer to him and pressed his lips against her. At first, she was shocked by the kiss but soon she melted in the kiss. Sparta ready to come with me my god slayer. Scathatch, yes husband, take me with you. Sparta snapped his fingers and a garganta opened, Sparta picked up Scathatch like a princess and entered the garganta with her. A garganta opened near a random beach and Sparta walked out of it carrying Scathatch in his arms. He laid her down on the sand and took out an artifact out of gob that would help to heal Scathatch at a very fast rate. Scathatch was already unconscious and her body started to heal at a visible rate. Sparta. I think they would be really happy to meet my new fiancé. Chapter 63, Interruption Scathatch was sleeping peacefully even after being completely healed, she was very badly injured. During night time Scathatch regained consciousness. She found herself in a cave where a bonfire was lit. 
Sparta was also sitting beside her with his back leaning on the wall. Scat Hatch, where am I? Sparta, so you are finally awake, how are you feeling now? Scat Hatch remembered all that has happened between them, the fight, her defeat, and they kiss. After she remembered all that her face became completely red. Sparta, Scat Hatch are you okay? Your face is completely red do you have a fever? Scat Hatch, I am fine, but I don't know your name. Sparta, my name is Sparta Gilgamesh Lucifer. Scat Hatch, how did you become a pure devil? Sparta, I don't know after I was born my devil bloodline kept getting pure. Scat Hatch, so tell me, were you serious while making that vow to me? Sparta, I was completely serious. Scat Hatch are you hungry? Scat Hatch, yes a little bit, but can you tell me how did I heal so fast? Sparta, I used one of my artifacts which helps to heal someone rapidly, and here have some fish. Scat Hatch bit into the fish and her mind were blown away, she was in a trance after eating the food. She immediately ate the entire fish like a hungry cat. Seeing her antics Sparta chuckled a bit. She immediately started asking for seconds, she didn't mind that Sparta was laughing. She just wanted to eat more, it was the best fish she never ate in all her immortal life. Sparta, won't you be missing your home? Scat Hatch, it was never my home, I just lived there to avoid the power struggles of disparate peoples who all just want to rope me in with them for their advantage. Sparta, I kinda relate to your problem. Scat Hatch, so what do you want to do in your life? Sparta, I want to defeat Great Red and take his position in the ranking. So no one bothers me as no one bothers him. Scat Hatch, that is a simple dream but you have to work hard. Sparta, one of my fiancés also told me the same line you did. Scat Hatch, tell me about her. After that Sparta told her about all his fiancés where he lives, about his brother and a lot more. Scat Hatch was really happy that she was able to find someone for herself after all this time. Scat Hatch got up from where she was sitting and came near Sparta and hugged him and fell asleep like that. She was smiling even when she was sleeping Sparta seeing that started petting her back and he also fell asleep leaning on the wall. The next day Sparta woke up and found that Scat Hatch was nowhere to be found he got worried and got out of the cave. He found her in front of the beach swinging her spear, it was like a beautiful dance Sparta got entranced by her skills. He stood quietly at the side while she was swinging her spear. Scat Hatch noticed him and stopped swinging. Scat Hatch, good morning husband, I was just practicing and seeing your peaceful face I didn't want to wake you up. Sparta, good morning darling, no it's okay. You were looking beautiful while practicing. Hearing Sparta, Skatika's face became red. Scat Hatch, so when will you take me to meet others? Sparta, today we will return, I just wanted to know each other better. Hope you didn't hate it. Scat Hatch, no it is nice. I guess how much the world has changed now. Sparta, you will not recognize anything now. Suddenly a magic circle formed in front of Sparta and face of Azazel popped out of it in the form of a hologram. Azazel, Sparta where are you? I was trying to reach you on your mobile. Sparta, I am on some random island. What do you want? Azazel, who? Sorry for disturbing you on your honeymoon. Sparta, it's nothing like that. Scat Hatch. Husband who is he? Azazel, ha ha ha. Brat. You have been hiding something here, I really want to see how you explain this to others. But I think I have seen her somewhere. Sparta, that's none of your business how I tell others and she is Skathatch the God Slayer. Hearing Sparta, Azazel lost all colors from his face and started shivering. Azazel, way a ot. But why is she here? Skathatch, that is none of your business. Now leave us alone or I will gut you like a pig. Azazel, eek. No no please don't do that, I am just a lowly fallen angel. Sparta save me from her. Azazel shrieked like a girl and started begging for his life. Sparta, Scat Hatch calm down, I know he is annoying but he is good. So what do you want Azazel? Azazel, don't you think that I might be calling you to see how are you doing? Sparta, I know how you are. So tell me quickly or I will leave you with Scat Hatch. Azazel, straight face, you are no fun. Kokabil is in Kuah and he wants to start a war, please stop him. Sparta, I am not your subordinate like Vali, I will stop him but he will die. Azazel, I was thinking that you would say that. Kill him or whatever just stop him. Sparta, okay, I will take care of that. After that Azazel cut off the call Sparta sat down on the beach, 
he started petting Sand beside him gesturing Skathatch to take a seat beside him. Skathatch came near him and sat. Sparta, Skathatch I want you to train me in weapons. Skathatch, anything for you, but you are already so strong. Sparta, I am strong if you compare the raw power, I want you to teach me how to fight with weapons. Skathatch, gladly, so when should we start? Sparta, how about right now? After that Skathatch got up and started to show Sparta how to handle a spear. Sparta activated his M's and started to watch her every move. Sparta quickly memorized all of that because of Sharingan and became proficient with them because of instant mastery. Skathatch was shocked that how quickly Sparta was mastering the moves. It was just unbelievable for her, she spent her whole life making these moves perfect and Sparta was learning them at lightning speed. Sparta, let's take a break. Skathatch, I also agree but the speed at which you are learning is just unbelievable. Sparta, Skathatch will you go on a date with me? Skathatch, I will go with you anywhere, I will not get scared by a date. Sparta, ha 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 ha. Skathatch, why are you laughing? Sparta, no it's nothing, let's go. Sparta snapped his fingers and a garganta opened and both of them stepped into it. A garganta appeared in a dark alley near a shopping mall. They got out of it and Sparta took her to buy clothes for her. She was really standing out in her armor. Everyone was thinking that she might be doing cosplay or something. While they were walking through the mall Skathika's eyes were sparkling seeing the changes that have happened. They entered a clothing store and Sparta asked to choose some clothes for herself. Skat hatch, but I am comfortable in my battle armor. Sparta, but if you wear this in public everyone will stare at you, which I don't like. Skat hatch, you are so cute becoming jealous. Okay, but how will I change into my battle armor if someone attacks me? Sparta took out a ring from Gob and gave it to Skathatch. Sparta, take this ring and it will become your personal clothes wardrobe in your mind. Whenever you want you will be able to change into any dress you like. You can store all of your clothes there. Skathatch didn't say anything just her cheeks turned red. Seeing her Sparta understood what she wanted, she wanted him to put on the ring on her finger. Sparta obliged and placed the ring on her ring finger. Skathatch was really happy she was beaming with a smile. She soon chooses a lot of clothes and Sparta paid for them, after that he took her to have lunch. She was really excited. They had lunch after that he took her to a park it was almost dark. Sparta was about to kiss Skathatch but it was interrupted by a call. Sparta took out his phone and saw that it was Sana. He picked up the call. Sana, Sparta are you back yet? Sparta, yes I am back. Sana, quickly come to school. Kokabil is here. He wants to blow up the whole town. Sparta, okay I will be there shortly. Saying that Sparta disconnected the call. Skathatch was fuming in anger. Skathatch, why is everyone interrupting us? Sparta, it is because of Kokabil, he is trying to blow up my town. Skathatch, he is going to die, he will know today why everyone fears me. Chapter 64, God Slayer Skathatch where is this school thing take me there? Sparta didn't say anything and pulled her closer and kissed her. She also returned the kiss. After a long kiss, they parted from each other. Skat Hatch, I am still angry and I am still going to kill him. Sparta, I just wanted to kiss you, you get a different kind of charm when you are angry. Skat Hatch, you can flirt with me later now take to school or whatever it is. Sparta snapped his fingers and a garganta opened in front of them, both of them entered it. At the same time, a garganta appeared over the school and Sparta and Skathatch came out of it. Sparta has his wings out and he was holding Skathatch by her waist. Sparta looked down to check the situation and found that it was truly dire. Gabriel was sealed inside a barrier and everyone's face was downcast. Kokabil was laughing like a maniac. Kokabil, ha 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 ha. None of you can stop me now, you are just weak. After God died they decided that they should stop the war what the f asterisk ck. Now I will restart the war by having the heads of sisters of the devil kings. Sparta, so he told them that God was dead. Well, there is no crying over spilled milk. Kokabil made a huge light spear and was about to launch it but suddenly the barrier broke and someone dropped down. The field was covered by dust, Kokabil held off his attack. The dust settled down and everyone could see a woman in purple skin tight armor carrying a crimson barbed spear. Gabriel recognized her and was shocked to see her here. Skat hatch. I am no genius but I am sure you are Kokabil. Kokabil, 
I don't know who you are but since you dare to interrupt me you can die along with them. Kokobiel pointed the light spear at Scathatch and launched it. Scathatch didn't move and she also launched her spear. As soon her spear touched the light spear, the light spear shattered and Gobold continued its path and torn off Kokobiel's right arm and trailed off. Kokobiel screamed in pain, red blood gushed out from the stub. Scathatch opened her palm and the spear returned to her hands. By this time Sparta came down and broke the barrier in which Gabriel was captured with Barrier Breaker. She came out and hugged Sparta. Gabriel started to cry in his embrace. Gabriel, I failed to stop him from telling the truth. Sparta, don't worry you did what you could and I am proud of that. Everyone was shocked by how easily the unknown woman tore the arm of Kokobiel. They were unable to even scratch him. Kokobiel, what have I done to you? Why are you interfering? Scat Hatch, you interrupted my private time with my husband so you deserve to die. Kokobiel gathered all of his remaining power and formed a light spear and again attacked her. Scat Hatch again launched her spear which shattered the light spear Kokobiel launched and again torn off his remaining arm and trailed off. Scat Hatch again called back her spear. Kokobiel again screamed in agony but nobody took pity on him. Kokobiel was now scared, he knew that he was going to die. Kokobiel, please spare me. I am too important to die here. Scat Hatch, insects like you should be glad dying by my hands, you should even lay down your head to get butchered. I am Scat Hatch the God Slayer, you non significant insect should be proud that I am the one who will squash your head. Everyone who heard that was completely scared, some devils even prayed for Kake Beal's soul, which caused the headache. But they were all scared of Scat Hatch, they all knew the legends of God Slayer except few of them. Scat Hatch didn't say anything and pulled her arm back and again launched her spear at Kokobiel. The spear pierced his heart at a speed incomprehensible even for the devils. Kokobiel's lifeless body dropped on the ground. His face still had a horrified expression on it. Scat Hatch, now that he is dead. Sparta, let's continue our date. Scat Hatch said the last sentence with a rhythm in it. Sparta, it's dark now, I will take you to another time. Now come here, I want you to introduce to a few people. Just as Sparta finished saying that he felt too intense glare on him, he turned his head and found Sana and Akeno glaring at him. Sparta has a worried smile on his face. Both of them were smiling but it was not a smile of love, it was the smile which promised lots of pain. Sana, were you the husband she was referring to darling? Akeno, please tell me, I also want to know. Chapter 65, Aftermath Sparta, well. It is not like that. She is also my fiancé but she likes to call me husband. Sana, and what about your private time with her? Sparta, we were on a date that's all. Akeno, now since you brought her here, don't be shy introduce us to her. Sana, yes, we need to thank her for taking care of Kokobiel. Akeno, Amy is not going to like it. By the time Akeno finished saying Scathatch has already joined them. Immediately after killing Kokobiel she lost all her rage and was back to neutral mood. Scat Hatch, you must be Sana and Akeno, Sparta told me a lot all about you and there is no need to thank me it is natural to save my fellow sister. Don't need to worry about Amy, I don't slay gods without a reason. Akeno, you were really strong like in the legends. Scat Hatch, no you are weak which is unacceptable. I will be training both of you from now on and when I start with you both you will be wishing that you should have died today. Sana and Akeno completely paled hearing her. They were as white as a sheet of paper. They were shivering and shaking like they were touched by a ghost. Akeno, Sparta tell her to spare us. Sparta, no can do forgive me, my love. Sana and Akeno have a look of despair on their faces. They had lost all hope of being saved. While this was going on between them Rias gathered her peerage and came towards them. Rias, thank you Skathaksama and Sparta for saving our lives, all of my peerage is in your debt. Sparta, don't worry it's not a big deal. Scat hatch. Who are you? Rias, my name is Rias Gremory from the Gremory household and this is my peerage. Scat Hatch, well girl train hard so that this situation doesn't repeat itself. Rias, yes Skathaksama I take it to heart. Issa, because of you I was unable to suck on Rias's boobs. Scat Hatch, so should I also send you to that insect? He would be really happy to find an insect like him in the afterlife. Rias, Issa stop. Skathaksama please forgive him. He is still not disciplined. Sparta, Rias control your servant or you will have to start searching for new pawns. Issei was about to say something but Rias slapped him in front of everyone, 
which worked really nicely as it silenced him quite nicely. Sana, Rias take your peerage and retire for today. The SC will be fixing the school. Rias, no, I can't do that. Let us help. Sana, you have done your part, this responsibility falls over us. Rias had no choice but to reluctantly leave the school, but Akeno stayed behind. Sana and her peerage were fixing the school. Akeno was talking with Skathatch and Sparta was talking Gabriel. Sparta was still consoling Gabriel about all that has happened. From the corner of his eyes, Sparta noticed a blue-haired walking towards him and Gabriel. Zenovia, Sparta Sama please forgive me for all my misbehaviors against you. I have been wrong about the church my whole life was a lie. Now that I know the truth I lost everything. Sparta, just call me Sparta and apology accepted just don't repeat yourself. Listen everyone has a reason live. After you were born you dedicated your life to God but since now it is gone, find a reason to live for yourself. Gabriel, why don't you come with me, I am also responsible for what happened here in a way. Sparta, so you found a way right? Gabriel, yes we did, but currently it can only be used by the Archangels. It is still a flaw but I have my deck. Zenovia, Gabriel Sama what are you talking about? Gabriel, we had found a way to reincarnate humans into angels. Sparta, so Zenovia what did you do with the fragments? Do you plan to tell your partner? Zenovia, I possibly cannot, her devotion is much deeper than mine. Even if she can become an angel I cannot tell her the truth. I left the fragments near her bed along with a letter. Sparta, so Gabriel when will you come back? Gabriel, I cannot tell now but shortly. Sparta, tell your brother that it worked and I am ready to help him. Gabriel, you have no idea how much it means to us angels all of us so you greatly. Sparta, it's no big deal, anything for you. Visit soon. After saying that Gabriel disappeared in a bright light along with Zenovia. Sparta, after an hour the school was completely fixed and Sana and her peerage heaved out a sign. Sana came to Sparta asking the rest of her peerage to go home. Sana, Sparta let's go home I am completely tried. Akeno, I also want to sleep now. Sparta snapped his fingers and a garganta opened in front of them and all of them entered it. A garganta appeared inside Sparta's house and all of them came out it. Amy noticed Skathatch and got sacred. Amy jumped up and hid behind Sparta. Amy, eek. Sparta please don't let her kill me. Sparta, don't worry she won't hurt you she is really nice. Amy looked at Skathatch with pure caution. Skathatch, you don't need to be scared of me, I don't bite. Amy hesitatingly came forward and shook her hands with Scat Hatch. Amy, sorry for all the hostility. Scat Hatch, don't worry about that after all, you are my fellow sister. Amy and Tia got shocked hearing that. Tia, you mean, that you also love Sparta? Scat Hatch, yes and he also accepted me. Sparta, we can talk all about that while eating. Everyone get freshened up and join at the table. After that everyone went to get freshened up and after that everyone joined at the table. Sparta told them what had happened in the fight and after the fight. After dinner, all of them went directly to sleep as all of them were really tried. Chapter 66, Training Rias, POV I came to Issei's home with Asia and Issei. I was really angry with Issei how he behaves and found that it is getting out of hand. Why is he so perverted? I need to talk with him. Rias Issei comes upstairs with me. I need to talk with you. Issei didn't reply and just followed me, maybe he was still angry that I slapped him, but I didn't have any other options. I opened the door and entered his room along with him and Asia. Rias, Issei you need to understand that Sparta is not like us. If you get on his nerves he will kill you without a second thought. And what were you thinking talking to Skathaksama like that? Even she would have killed you without batting an eye. Issei but because of her I was unable to suck your boobs. Rias, let me tell you honestly I don't like your perverted nature at first it was okay and now it is just simply getting out of hand. I promised you that only because we were about to die and if you could have defeated Kokabil it was a small price to pay. Issei, how can you say that? I even sacrificed my arm to save you from the marriage. Rias, I will be forever grateful for that, but you need to learn about boundaries. Please keep your perverted nature in check. We still have time to correct that but if this goes on I cannot always protect you. Issei, you won't understand, please leave I don't want to talk with you right now. Asia, please Issei try to listen, Rias-senpai is telling you this only for your good. Issei, 
Asia you also think that I was out of the line? Asia, yes you were please don't be angry and think clearly. After Asia told him that Issei started to think carefully. Issei please understand that we want better for you. Issei, I guess you are right, but it will take some time for me to change myself. Sorry, President, I was just angry, I won't do it again. Rias, thank you Issei. Next day Sparta household. The next morning Sparta woke up and found that Sana was missing from his bed. Skathatch also wanted to sleep with but Sparta stopped her saying it was too quick for them to get into a physical relationship. Skathatch finally relented somehow. Sparta got up from his bed and got freshened up. After that, he went downstairs and entered his training ground to complete his daily training. He entered the training ground and shocked to the core. He saw that Sana and Akino were running laps while Skathatch was launching her spear at them if they get slow. Both Sana and Akino had a horrified look on their faces. They were like running for their lives. Skathatch noticed Sparta and turned towards him. Skathatch, good morning husband, I hope you don't mind borrowing them in the morning. Sparta, not at all knock yourself out. Sana and Akino saw Sparta and they found hope. They stopped running and were about to ask Sparta to save them. But suddenly a spear landed on the ground between them with incomprehensible speed. Scat Hatch, who told you to stop running? Start running again you lazy asses or I will put the spear where the sun doesn't shine. Hearing Scat Hatch both Sana and Akino got scared. Sana slash Akino, yes ma'am, please forgive us. They again started running. Scat Hatch, you don't mind how I treat them right? Sparta, it is for their good only, I have seen how you treat them normally so I don't mind. You are free to treat them however you like while training them. Scat Hatch, I don't understand you are strong so why didn't you try to train them? Don't you want them to be able to protect themselves? Sparta, you see I am not a trainer kind of guy, I have tried training them but I was not able to get harsh on them. Scat Hatch, I understand. Sparta, so Scat Hatch how did you sleep? Scat Hatch, well it was nice, after a very long time I slept on a bed and it was very comfortable. Sparta, glad you liked it. So Scat Hatch let's start my weapons training. Scat Hatch, okay let's start. Both of you keep running and if you stop or try to skip you know what will happen right. Sana slash Akino, ma'am we won't stop even it takes our lives. After that Sparta activated his M's and started fighting with Scat Hatch with a spear. He had improved hugely in case of handling spears and even swords. After one hour of training, Sparta left Scat Hatch to train Sana and Akino. He went upstairs and took a bath and went to wash his car. He was thinking of buying another car. But he needed to do something else first, his house members were increasing rapidly and his current house was getting small for them. So he decided to call Azazel. Azazel, my favorite devil, what can I do for you? Sparta, stop the flatteries and I want to cash in another favor. Azazel, what do you want me to do? Sparta, upgrade my house into a big mansion that has four floors above the ground. Azazel, devils are much better in doing that. Sparta, but none of them owe me favors and I don't want them asking any favors from me in return from this. Azazel, fair enough. I will upgrade your house during the night. Tomorrow you will wake up in your new house. Sparta, I am looking forward to that. Chapter 67, Swimming Pool After washing his car Sparta went inside and found Sana and Akeno laying on the ground. Sparta, what happened to you? Sana, my whole body aches, I can't even lift a single finger. Akeno, I thought I loved pain, but not like this. Sana, she is the actual devil. Sparta, don't you think it should be God in your case? Akeno, yes you made your point now please pick us up. Sana, she is a slave driver. Scat Hatch, keep talking like that and I will increase your training regimen. Sana slash Akeno, sorry ma'am we are completely satisfied. Sparta was laughing on the floor seeing their condition it was really pitiful. And when Scat Hatch came they immediately agreed that they were satisfied with the training. After that Sparta helped Akino and Sana to the table so that they could have breakfast. Akino, Sparta can you feed us, darling? I cannot even lift my hand. Sparta was about to comply but then he looked towards Scat Hatch and she was glaring at him. Her glare gave him the complete message I dare you to feed her. Sparta, sorry no can do, it's part of your training. Akeno, okay then I want to you spend some time with me today. Sparta, that I can do. Sana, that is not fair. Sparta, 
Sana I haven't spent any time with Akino lately with all that has been going on. Her rating game then the church business. Sana, ugh. I hate to agree but you are right. By the way where are Amy and Tia? Sparta, Amy took Tia with her to Takamagahara. Looks like they have some treasures there, which needs to be evaluated. Scat Hatch, but I also want to spend some time with you. Sparta, only yesterday we had our date. I will take you on a later date. Scat Hatch, uh -huh. Okay. After that finished their breakfast and Akeno sneaked inside Sparta's room to do something. Sparta was waiting in his car for Akeno to come and she came while carrying a duffel bag with her. Sparta, so where do you want to go? Akeno, to school. Sparta, I didn't know you are that diligent, you want to go to school for a date when school was off. Akeno, yes, now shut up and take me. Sparta, okay okay, my lady. After that Sparta drove his car to the school and he noticed that Akeno was having an evil smile from time to time but he decided not to ask. He knew that Akeno was both sadist and masochist so he knew that Akeno can have some really disturbing thoughts sometimes. Soon they reached the school and Akeno lead led him towards the pool. He suddenly remembered something. Sparta, shit. It is the pool cleaning day how can I forget that, but it will be nice to see Akeno in a swimsuit. Sparta. I see you are leading me towards the pool but it was left unused right? Akeno, Mina. I was planning to surprise you but you have to ruin it. Sparta, sorry babe, but I would love to see you in a swimsuit. Akeno, looks like someone is excited. Sparta, you have no idea. Akeno and Sparta soon reached the pool and saw the whole orc present there. Rias and her peerage were shocked to see Sparta there. Rias, good morning Sparta I was not expecting you to come. Sparta, well Akeno brought me here without saying anything. But I see the pool is still filthy. Akeno, we will be cleaning the pool in return we can use it as much we want for today. Sparta, well that is nice. Rias, Sparta why don't you take a seat while we clean the pool? Sparta, hell no. Let me help you too. Sparta helped them to clean the pool when Sparta suddenly cursed inside his mind. He didn't bring any trunks with him. After the pool was cleaned Akeno filled the pool with clean water using her magic. Sparta was standing near the pool while someone started pulling his sleeves. Sparta looked downwards and found Chiron in her school's swimsuit. Chiron, Sparta I want a favor. Sparta, anything for you Niko-chan. Chiron, I don't know how to swim will you teach me? Sparta, I would like to but I didn't bring my trunks. Akeno, who said you didn't? Sparta looked towards Akeno and found her wearing a s asterisk xy purple bikini which didn't leave much to the imagination. She was holding Sparta's trunks. Sparta, you look beautiful. I mean really beautiful. He say if you look towards Akeno with your disgusting eyes I will gouge them out with my bare hands. Do you understand? He say, yes sir I will not even look towards her. Sparta, good. Now Akeno how did you get it? Akeno. I sneaked into your room before coming down. Sparta, Chiron wait for me I will join you after I change. Sparta took his trunks from Akeno and went to men's changing room and soon came out in his trunks and then started to teach Chiron how to swim. After 15 minutes of training, she got the hang of it and Sparta left her so that she can practice herself. After that, he came out of the pool and took a seat beside Rias. Rias was looking towards Issei while he was teaching Asia how to swim. Sparta, have you confessed to him? Rias, wa wa what are you talking about? Sparta, I can that you love him it is clear by the way you look at him. Rias, so there is nothing hidden from you. Sparta, you don't have to say if you don't want to. Rias, Sparta do you hate me? Sparta, I don't hate you I just didn't have the best impression of you. Rias, so what about now? Sparta, you have changed a lot, you trained with Graffi ya. Akeno told me you were working hard. If you ask about now I will say that you are quite nice according to me. Rias, so can we be friends? Sparta, I would love to. Sparta extended his hands towards Rias and she shook it with a happy face. Akeno was watching them from a corner with a smile on her face. Rias, I like him. Sparta, what? Rias, I meant I like him but I am not sure. Sparta, why is that? Rias, his pervertedness is quite out of hand. If he gets it under control then I will surely fall in love with him. Which girl would like her boyfriend to look at a stranger girl while thinking about her body? Sparta, 
well you are right about that. Issei has changed a little bit, I kept my eyes towards him and he didn't look towards Akino after I warned he didn't even try for once. Rias, me and Asia we both believe in him that he can change let's give it some time and see what happens. Sparta, well I will wish for the best. While Sparta and Rias were talking Akino came near them and hugged Sparta from behind. Her boobs were completely pressing against Sparta's back. Sparta, you know that it is not nice to eavesdrop. Akino, I was just watching my best friend and boyfriend becoming friends. Sparta, so Akino do you want to go for a swim? Akino, I would love to. After that Sparta and Akino went for a swim. After swimming for a bit they went near the edge. Akino, Sparta I have been this kind of time with you. Sparta, I am sorry Akino but lately we both had a lot going on. Akino, I know that that is why I want to enjoy this day to the fullest. Sparta leaned towards Akino and kissed her. Akino got embarrassed because everyone was present there, but she didn't stop Sparta and melted in the kiss. Sparta and Akino were still in the pool kissing and Akino suddenly grabbed Sparta's D asterisk CK. Sparta got surprised and broke the kiss. Sparta, you know that we can't do it right? You are still a minor. Akino, I will wait for that but can't we have a little bit of foreplay? Sparta, that we can have. Let's find some private place. Sparta and Akeno both got out of the pool and they dried themselves and they went towards the locker. After entering a locker Sparta and placed a space barrier around the room. As soon as Sparta made the barrier Akeno jumped over him and started to kiss him. After that, the room got filled with sounds of pleasure but they didn't do the deed just some foreplay. After some time they walked out of the locker and went towards the pool. Akeno went and sat beside Rias and Sparta went to Chiron to see how she was doing but instead, she offered him chocolates. Rias, Akeno how was the locker room? Akeno, I don't know what are you talking about? Rias, you don't have to accept, just tell me how was it? Akeno, I am still a minor so we didn't do it. Rias, that's a real gentleman for you. Akeno, that I agree with you completely. After that, it was time to return home. They all went towards the changing room and changed into their normal clothes. Akeno told Sparta to leave because she still had her devil duties. Sparta went towards his car and drove towards his home. Sparta, well today was fun. Chapter 68, Tsubaki's Confession and Prank Sparta entered his home and found Sana and Tsubaki were talking about something. Sana and Tsubaki noticed Sparta and became quiet. Sparta, Sana what's up? Tsubaki it is nice to see you. How have you been? Sana, I was just clearing up something with my queen. Tsubaki, it is nice to see you too. I have been fine. Tsubaki had red cheeks while she spoke which raised suspicion in Sparta's mind. Sana, Sparta, Tsubaki wants to speak with you. Sparta, Tsubaki what's up? Tsubaki, I I won wanted to say that I like you. I liked you for a long time. Sparta, I know. Sana. What do you mean by you know? If you knew why didn't you say anything? Sparta, I didn't say anything because she had doubts about her own feelings, so I wanted that she should decide for herself. I didn't wanted to influence her in any way. Tsubaki, was I that easy to read? Sparta, yes you were. Sana, so oh. Sparta, I like you too but let's go on a few dates so we can know each other better. Tsubaki, I like the idea. Sana. So that means you are dating? Sparta, yes I think I was pretty clear before. Maybe your brain was damaged while training with Scat Hatch. Sana, no. I heard you clearly at the first time. I was just making sure. Sparta, whatever you say good luck for tomorrow's training. Sana, my miserable being is so funny to you? Sparta, haha. Maybe a little bit. Don't worry I will give you a nice massage before we go to sleep. Tsubaki, President you were training why didn't you tell me? Sana, trust me you don't want to know. Sparta, I wouldn't be so sure, she will be joining you guys shortly. Tsubaki, please train me I won't let you down. Sana, are you stupid? He is not training us, we are being trained by the devil. Tsubaki got confused hearing that. If Sparta wasn't training them then who was? Tsubaki was thinking that if there is some other devil strong like Sparta courtesy of Sana's last sentence. Then suddenly a voice came from upstairs. Scat Hatch, Sana you should have told me you like my training so much, one extra round for you from tomorrow. Sana, please ma'am anything but that, 
it just slipped out of my mouth I didn't want to say it. Sparta, Sana, if you live we will meet again and if not then rest in peace and maybe meet me in the next life. Scat Hatch, Sparta who is this new girl? Sparta, well she confessed to me and I have agreed to date her. Scat Hatch, that means she will also be joining the training. Tsubaki, please teach me, being trained by the legendary god slayer I cannot ask for more. It is like a dream come true. Sparta, well someone is excited. It was nice knowing you too. Tsubaki, why are you talking like that I am going to die and president what's up with the gloomy face we are lucky to be trained by her. Scat Hatch, see you all should be feeling lucky. If not for my husband here you would never get that chance. Sana, at least me and Akino won't be going alone to an early grave. Sparta, cheer up it's not like that you are going to die tomorrow. Scat Hatch, don't worry Sparta I won't let them die easily. Sparta, I know that babe. Sana, Sparta there is one more thing I wanted to tell you. Tomorrow is open house in the school, I think you should be calling Vali. Sparta, that will be tough. I will ask him to come but I am not sure. Scat Hatch, I want to go too. Sparta, I just cannot introduce as my wife or fiancé to the whole school along with the others. If I introduce you only then it won't be fair to the rest of them. Scat Hatch, ugh. Fine I understand. After that Sparta went to the backyard and called Vali. Vali, how have you been brother? I heard about your recent conquests. Sparta, life is going smoothly on my end. How have you been? Vali, I have been well too, just busy with training so I can beat you. Sparta, so I will be hoping for an awesome fight next time we meet. Vali, you bet you can. Sparta, Vala tomorrow is open house in my school. Families of every student will be visiting. I want you to come. Vali, air. I don't know brother. Sparta, Vala you are the only family that I have. It's been long we haven't seen each other, please Vali. Vali, okay okay now don't get emotional with me, you have enough wives for that. I will come, should I bring Azazel too? Sparta, don't bring that damn fallen, he is annoying. Vali, okay I will come alone but I have a condition. I want to meet with the Red Dragon Emperor. Sparta, okay done, just don't kill him. Vali, I will not kill him, at least not for now. Sparta, that is good enough for me. Bye, brother take care. Vali, you too take care bro. After that Sparta disconnected the call and went inside and found that Tia and Amy were already home. Sparta, Amy, Tia how was your day? Tia, it was awesome, I got to see so many treasures. It was like heaven for me. Amy, it was a stressful day. Sparta, I can understand putting a leash on an excited dragon king is not possible. Tia, hey I am not some dog. Amy, it wasn't for her, we have been summoned to a four-way peace treaty meeting. Everything became chaotic in Takamagahara. We are still not sure what to do. Sparta, what do you want? Amy, I personally want peace. Sparta, well you say that just see what everyone else says. Sparta was about to reply to her when a Satri clan magic circle appeared in the room and a cheerful Sira dressed in a magical girl costume came out of it. She started to scan the whole room when her eyes landed to a certain someone and she became pale. Sira, SCA SCA Scat Hatch? Are you really real? Scat Hatch, I am pretty sure that I am real I can stab you to prove it. Sira got scared directly jumped behind Sparta to hide from her like a cat. Sira, forget about me Sparta. Please save Sana I will hold her back. Sparta, PFFFTTT. Sira to say that you need to stand in front of her not hide behind my back. Sira, who said I am hiding, I am taking a vantage point. Scat Hatch, you are going to die. She started walking towards Sparta and came in front of him. Boo. Sira, eek. I don't want to die, I am still too young. But you can kill me just promise to spare my sister. Sparta. Ha 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 ha. That was priceless. Sana did you record everything? Sana, yes everything. Sana was recording the whole scenario on her mobile. She showed the video to everyone including Sira. After the video ended everyone was rolling on the floor while laughing except Sira. She was about to cry. Sira, you are all meanies. I won't talk with you. Sparta, we are sorry Sira but it was really funny. Sira, I am still not talking. Sparta, okay I will take you to another magical girl convention. 
What do you say? Sira, okay I forgive you all. But now explain how she is here? Her mood turned a 180 degree when she heard that Sparta would take her to Magical Girl Convention. After that Sparta explained how he got Scathatch and also told her that she also became his fiancé. He left the details of the fight and about his breakthrough to super class. Sira, that is a lot to take in. Sparta, so why the sudden visit? Sira, I came to visit my sister and also to invite you to the peace meeting. Amy already knows about that she will tell you the details. Sparta, shouldn't you be the one explaining? Sira, I came to meet my sister that is not important. Amy, Sparta leave her we all know about her priorities. Sparta, that we do. After talking for an hour Sira went to the underworld but not before embarrassing her sister. Sparta suddenly remembered something. Sparta, our house will be upgraded tonight while we sleep, so when you wake up tomorrow don't freak out. Everyone, way out. It is a matter to freak out. Chapter 69, Open House LL Next day Sparta woke up in his bed only with Tia, Amy has already left for her duties and Sana must be training with Scat Hatch. Sparta remembered that today was open house and Vala has promised that he was coming. He got up from his bed and saw that the room was completely changed, it was huge now. So after getting freshened up he decided to check the full house and found that it has changed tremendously. His house had four floors as he asked and the top three floors had four bedrooms and two guest rooms. The ground floor had a kitchen along with a huge dining space, it also had a pretty nice bar which Sparta liked very much. It had all kinds of alcoholic drinks. The ground floor also had a huge meeting room. On the third floor there was a library, on the second floor there was a small gaming center and on the fourth floor, they had an open flower garden. Sparta was very happy with the house he went to the kitchen and found Martel was preparing breakfast. Tia also joined him with a sparkling face. Sparta, Martel can I have some tea? Martel, just a bit. Here. Sparta, so how did you guys like the house upgrade? Martel. It is like a small castle, I have seen houses like this but was never able to enter anyone. Oh, and Amy Sama left a message saying that she really likes the house. Sparta, that is nice to hear. Martel choose any room according to your preferences and ask Kala Warner and Kelly to do the same. Tia how do you like the house? Tia, for me, it is confusing so many rooms and so many floors. Sparta, I see dragons are simple minded that's why they live in caves. Tia. Don't even try I am not in the mood right now. Sparta, not enough sleep? Tia, I tried to find who would be upgrading our house but everything was done by magic from outside. I just wasted my whole night in a whole goose chase. Sparta, well I didn't think you were into that kind of stuff. Tia, well I was just interested to see how this worked, a dragon can have hobbies too. After that Sparta decided not to answer her anymore and concentrate on other stuff like sipping his tea or looking outside the window. Sparta went to the backward and started to laze around and after a few moments, Kelly came to notify him that breakfast was prepared. Sparta went inside and found a scene that he expected. Sana, Tsubaki and Akeno were laying on the ground. Sparta, I can see you girls really like the new flooring. Tsubaki, please save me, I was wrong. I will die shortly if this goes on. Sana, you had your chance before but you lost it feeling that you were too lucky being trained by the legendary god slayer. Akeno, Tsubaki welcome to the early death club. Sparta, well that is some nice bond you girls have made. Akeno can you call Rias I need to talk with her. Akeno, sorry I cannot get up at this moment if you bring me my phone I will call her. Sparta goes and brings Akeno her phone and she calls Rias. Akeno, good morning Rias, Sparta wants to talk about something. Then Akeno hands over Sparta her phone. Sparta, good morning Rias. Rias. Good morning Sparta. What did you want to talk about? Sparta, today my brother will be coming for open house. He wants to meet with this generation's red dragon emperor. Rias, I didn't know you had a brother. Sparta, yes he is my twin brother. Rias, that is surprising. So why did your brother wants to meet Issei? Sparta, I don't know the reason but trust me he won't hurt him. Rias, okay bring him to Orc in the lunch break. Sparta. Okay that will be fine. See you later. Rias, see you later too. After that Sparta disconnected the call and helped them to get on the dining table. After breakfast, he drove towards the school along with Sana, Tsubaki, Akeno, and Tia. Sparta left the rest of them at school gates went to park his car. 
He parked his car and was about to enter the school when he sensed someone behind him. Sparta, well nice try bro. Volley, but you still sensed me, I still have a long way to go. Sparta, bro. Don't worry we are still young we have a lot of time. Volley, but you are still stronger than me. Sparta, so what brother? That is what makes us good rivals. Volley, I can agree with that. When are we going to meet the Red Dragon Emperor? Sparta, during the lunch break, now come and let's go inside. Sparta and Volley entered the school's main gate and all the girls were looking towards them with hungry eyes. Volley, you have to deal with these stairs daily? Sparta, nah. Other days I have my girls with me. Volley, well that is nice, it was a good decision that I skipped school. Sparta, yeah tell me about that. After that Sparta led Vala to his class and he came inside and leaned on the wall. Soon all the students started to fill the room along with their parents. After some time the bell rang and the teacher came and asked the students to introduce their invites. Soon Sparta's time came and every student looked towards him. Teacher, Sparta Grud did someone come from your house? Sparta, yes, my twin brother came. Vala came forward from the crowd. Vali, my name is Vala Grud. Lots of girls had hearts in their eyes, they found him really attractive. That bad guy vibe was working its charm. All the girls knew that Sparta was always surrounded by the top girls of the school, so they would have a better chance if they try on his twin brother. But some of the parents were different reactions such as Gremory family, Citri family, and Sertsk's Lucifer. Seeing another Lucifer descendant was really shocking for them. But they knew that they won't get any straight answers from the brothers maybe Citri family could get the information but it was still hard. The class then went on normally and soon the bell rang which indicated the lunch break had started. Sparta got up from his seat and saw that Vala was surrounded by a lot of girls trying to get his number or something. Sparta went there and decided to save his brother. Sparta, excuse me, ladies, I need to borrow my brother. All girls, ah. Please bring him back quickly. Sparta, I will try my best but no promises. Vala let's go. After that Vala quickly made his way through the girls surrounding him and came out of the class along with Sparta. Vali, you saved me there. Do you have to deal with this every day? Sparta, nah I had Tiamat, she scared every girl wanted to come near me. So Vala like someone back there? Vali, you know that I don't have time for all this stuff. Sparta, you know brother, you are stupid. We are here we will continue this later. Vali, I would also like to know why you called me stupid. Sparta knocked at the door of Orc and the door was opened by Graphia. Sparta and Vali entered the room and found that Rias was there with her peerage along with her parents and Sertsks. Rias had a new person in her peerage Katas Ui, Marayama and Katas the Kendo duo. Sparta guessed that she was Rias's new knight. Sparta, Sparta, long time no see Sertsks, Graphia. How have you been Zedekas, Velelana? Velelana, we have been fine Sparta. Zedekas. Looking good there Sparta. Sertsks, I never expected that you would have a twin brother, so another Lucifer descendant. Sparta, Sertsks you are no fun. Sertsks, I heard of your recent adventure you gained a powerful fiancé congratulations. Sparta, thanks for the compliments Sertsks. Sertsks, so you finally made the breakthrough? Sparta, oh so you noticed, no was else was able to notice that, I haven't it told about that even to my fiancés. Sertsks, maybe others can't sense it that easily but it is a different story for me. Zedekas, what breakthrough are you talking about? Sertsks, he is a super devil now. But he is way stronger than me even in my true form. Truth to be told he can now beat me even without Gob and without using half of his power. Everyone in the room was shocked to hear that. Sparta, Sertsks you give too much credit to yourself. I can beat you with even less. Again everyone was shocked hearing that. Vali, bro not cool, when did you decide to me that? Sparta, I was keeping that a secret. Vali, well a surprise for you too, I will be making the breakthrough soon. Sparta, wow that is nice to know. Everyone was again shocked that his brother would also become a super devil soon. There were only two super devils, young devils don't know about Rezevim and only a few devils knew that Rezevim reached that level, for now and one emerged recently and another one was about to emerge. Since from when becoming a super devil was that easy? Sparta, Rias you have a new knight, nice. Rias, yes her name is Katas Ui she is from Issei's class. It is her first day with us and she had received enough shocks for today, 
Please don't scare her anymore she won't be able to take it. Sparta, okay so let's get on business. Vala didn't say anything and walked up to Issei. Vali, so you are this generation's Red Dragon Emperor. Tell me where do you see yourself in power ranking? Issei, I don't understand. Vali, let's break it to make it simpler to you. Every supernatural being is ranked by numbers. My brother here is definitely in top 3, Sertsk is in top 10, I am in top 70 so tell me where do you see yourself? Issei, why are you telling me all these? Vala didn't reply and activated his sacred gear divine dividing. Everyone grew cautious of him and ready to attack. Vali, you see you are my rival, I am the white dragon emperor and you are the red dragon emperor we are destined to fight. As you are now I don't even need to activate my balance breaker to defeat you. So now is it simple enough for you? Issei, why now? This is all sudden to me. Vali, this is life everything can change in a moment. Sparta, what my brother wants to say is train hard because if you don't you will be cannon fodder and it will be no fun to beat you to the ground. Vali, Issei train hard, we will fight, so be ready for it. Vali deactivated his sacred gear and started walking towards the door. Sparta followed him and stopped in front of the door and turned around. Sparta, both of us brothers have high hope of you, don't let us down. Chapter 70, Meeting Begins After saying that Sparta and Vala left the orc. They were walking back towards the school. Vali, why did you call me stupid before? Sparta, tell me bro, what is your aim? Vali, I want to kill Rezevim with my own hands. Sparta, after doing that what will you do? Vali, I don't know. Sparta, have you ever thought about it? Vali, honestly I have never thought about it. Sparta, why don't you try to fall in love? Vali, I don't need any distractions. Sparta, do you honestly think that? Vali, yes I do. Sparta, no brother it is nothing like that. When I proposed Amy I was no strong I couldn't even defeat Azazel. I was challenged by Susanu but she never discouraged me. She always stood my side so that I would become more stronger. Vali, so you are saying that having a lover helps? Sparta, yes it does. Listen every one of us is imperfect. None of us are complete, but we get completed when someone supports us without any condition, someone cares for us without conditions. Vali, so you are saying that I should fall in love? Sparta, yes I want you to fall in love with someone or many. It will change your life's perspective. Vali, but won't she be a liability to my enemies? Your wives are strong except a few anyone will think ten times before attacking your wives. Sparta, listen if you are thinking that then my wives can also become a liability. There are a lots of strong people who can defeat my wives. But you should never think life that. You yourself said this before to East say that life can change in a moment. So why don't you try to find love and be happy? The path of revenge is lonely and dark. Vali, if you say so brother I will give it a try. Sparta, listen bro, since we were small we only had each other as family. You and me stay away from each other, so who is going to take care of you? Vali, I understand bro, but first I want to become a super devil after only that I will try it. If I get someone I should be able to protect her. Sparta, that is bro how things should be done. Come on bro let's drop you to home. Vali, no worries brother I can go on my own. Sparta. No bro we are meeting after a long time we need to celebrate, let's have a drink. After that Sparta and Vali entered Sparta's car and both of them drove through the roads at max speed of the car. Sparta decided to skip the rest of the school. They went to a bar and started drinking, after getting drunk Sparta paid for the tab and took his brother and left the bar. Sparta and Vali were having a nice chat. They got into Sparta's car and Sparta snapped his fingers and a garganta appeared in front of them. Sparta drove his car directly into the Garganta and the Garganta closed. A similar Garganta appeared inside Sparta's garage and both of them came out along with the car. Vali, that really worked, I had no idea that it will be so easy. Sparta, I am completely high, no idea what would happen if I would have driven up to here. Vali, bro I had a lot of fun, but now I should go back. Sparta, no bro stay for dinner please. Vali, okay I will stay. After that th brothers didn't talk any much and waited while the food was being prepared and they were just chatting with each other. At the time of dinner everyone came back and they also chatting with Vali. Amy, Sparta was right, you should try to fall in love at least one time. If it does not work out then you can always break up. Vali, 
don't worry I will give it a try. After that all of them continued eating rapidly. Soon everyone has finished their food. After dinner Sparta snapped his finger and a garganta appeared for Vala to go home. Soon Vala entered the garganta and disappeared. Sparta laid back on the chair and looked towards his fiancés. Amy, Sparta the meeting is tomorrow. I will go with my official guards from Takamagahara. Who are you going to take? Sparta, I will take Tia and Skathatch with me. That will give them a nice message. After that all of them went to their respective rooms to sleep they had a lot to do tomorrow. Skathatch decided that next day her training would be off because they would be having a long day. Next day Sparta woke up and saw that Amy had already left and only Tia and Sana were with him. He got up from his bed and started to get freshened up and went downstairs after that. Today he decided to train a little bit. He completed his usual training and came up to eat breakfast. When he started to eat breakfast Sana and Akeno came to him to tell that they were leaving and he should also come fast. Soon Sparta, Tia and Skathatch finished their breakfast and started to get ready. They got prepared shortly and left for school in Sparta's car. In the meeting room. Two Devil's Kings were there Sertsks and Sirafal, their sisters were also there along with their peerages and Grafia was standing behind Sertsks as usual. There were four angels Michael and Gabriel, Irina and Zenovia their brave saints respectively. Shinto chief goddess was also there Amaterasu along with her personal gods. Sira, where is Sparta isn't he going to come? Amy, he will come, it is just that he doesn't likes to wait. Michael, then what about Azazel? Azazel, what about me? Azazel came in along with Vali. Sertsks, so Vali you are working with the fallen angels? Vali, you can say that. Azazel, now only Sparta is missing. Sparta, I am touched about how much you care about me. Sparta walked in with Skathatch and Tiamat. Everyone was shocked seeing them both. Sparta, now that all of us are here let's begin. Chapter 71, Four-Way Peace Treaty After that everyone took their seats. Everyone who knew who Skathatch was feeling uneasy because of her presence in the room. But they somehow calmed down and decided to start the meeting. Michael, let's hear the report of the incident then we can discuss regarding that. Sira, I too agree with that. Sertsks, Rias you and your peerage fought with Kakabale, start with the report of the fight. After that Rias came forward and introduced herself and her peerage after that she started to report what happened in the fight, soon her report was finished. Gabriel, is there anyone who can vouch for her report? Sana, Gabriel Sama I can vouch for the report she gave you. Sira, now thank you, girls, for your hard work, we are so proud of you. Sertsks, firstly I want to ask Azazel that what are his thoughts on the actions of Kakabale. Azazel, if you are asking me if I knew about his actions or not. I didn't know about those but I got suspicious and started to check him that is when I found out what he was up to so I asked Sparta to take care of him. Sertsks, so you are telling that he did everything behind your back? Azazel, he never had my permission if you are asking about that. Michael, what disturbs me is the motivation of Kakabale. Azazel, this behavior is not exclusive to my faction, to tell you the truth he was not happy with his status quo. If he knew that I am in this town then he would not have tried to destroy the town. Sertsks, please stay with the topic. Azazel, why don't we stop discussing and make peace and be done with it? isn't this the objective of this meeting? Everyone was shocked hearing what Azazel proposed so blatantly, Sparta was suspicious that he was aiming this outcome from the beginning no matter what happens. Sparta, Sertsks, we knew you would propose something like that and had discussed beforehand, we would like peace. Michael, angels would also like to form a peace treaty. Azazel, now what has Shinto faction decided? Amy, we would also like to have peace but I have something to discuss with the devils. I heard that an entire race of yukai living in the underworld was massacred without any reason. What are you doing about that? Sira, Lady Amaterasu it was done by Nabarius house because they thought that a Nikomata had killed their master. Amy, I don't care what did you do about that? Sertsks, we cannot do anything because of the Devil Council. Amy, well then there won't be any peace between devils and Shinto faction and Kyuah will be taken back by the Shinto faction. Sira, so what do you want us to do? Amy, everyone involved with the massacre meaning the Nabrias family should be handed over to Shinto faction. Sertsks, we cannot just hand you over a complete family, we need some negotiations. Amy, there won't be any negotiations, you will agree to my terms or I will ask my fiancé to massacre the Devil Council along with Nabrias family. So now decide quickly. 
Sertsks and Sira started discussing within themselves. Sparta, Amy my love, that was quite daring. Amy, they didn't leave any other way. Sertsks, we have decided that we will hand over the devils involved with the massacre, the innocent devils will be left out. Amy, I can work with that, when will they be delivered? Sertsks, we will deliver them by tomorrow, now about the peace treaty. Amy, I will sign the peace treaty and you sign this agreement that you will be handing over the devils involved. After that Amy and Sertsk signed the respective agreements. Azazel, now that is out of the way, there are equally strong if not stronger forces than our factions present in this room. I am talking about the White Dragon Emperor, the Red Dragon Emperor and lastly the most dangerous one Sparta. What are your views regarding peace? Everyone looked towards Vali. Vali, I want to fight with strong opponents. Azazel, you can fight with a lot of strong opponents without having a war. Vali, that I can. After that everyone looked towards Issei. Issei, it's pretty hard to come up with anything at the moment. Azazel, let's make it more simple for you. If there is war there won't be any s asterisk x y time and if there is peace you can start making your harem. Issei, then peace for me, I love peace so much. After that everyone turned towards Sparta. Azazel, what did you want to do? Sparta, I want to become rank 1. And I will not be starting any fights until provoked. Azazel, well what about you Tia and Scat Hatch? Tia, well I am not interested in all those stuff. Sacked Hatch, I will follow my husband whatever he decides. Azazel was about to say something but suddenly the surroundings changed and lots of people within the meeting hall were completely frozen, the leaders were free to move along with the Red and White Dragon Emperor, Sparta, Tia and Scat Hatch were also free to move along with Zenovia, Irina and Kaiba. Sertsks, we were saved because of the immense power we have. Vali, the heavenly bunch there was saved because of their holy swords and me and Issei because of our sacred gears. Everyone got up from their chairs and looked outside the window and saw that magicians are teleporting within the barrier. Tia, those are some weak-ass magicians. Sira, I am the one and only magical girl here and they are straight ignoring me. Sertsks, Grafia prepare a magic circle to teleport. Grafia, they had somehow locked us inside. They must have someone in the inside. Sertsks, we were betrayed by someone here. Gabriel, but how were they able to stop the time? Azazel, it is the half-vampire brat, the enemy might have found a way to control him. Michael, their timing of using Lady Rias's bishop couldn't have been more perfect. Vali, now without wasting time let's kill him, so everything can go to normal. Azazel, Vali we are trying to make peace here why don't out and thin their numbers? After that Rias along with Issei left to save Gasper from enemy hands and Vala jumped out from the window and started killing the magicians. As soon as they left a magical circle appeared inside the room and two persons came out of it. One man and a woman, the woman was wearing spectacles and had dark skin. Her boobs were huge almost spilling out of her dress and the man was tall and he had mixed black and blonde hair, he had heterochromatic eyes one gold and another black. He also had pointed ears. Sparta knew who they were the woman was Kateria Leviathan and the man was someone interesting. He didn't expect him to come here. Kateria bowed in front of them. Kateria, good evening faction leaders my name is Kateria Leviathan, mind if I also participate in the meeting. Sparta didn't say anything just walked towards the man who now was leaning on a wall. Sparta, I didn't expect you to come with this insect. I didn't want to come but someone told me that I would find someone strong here and you are the one I was looking for. Sparta, so why don't we go out and try to kill each other? I don't know about killing but let's fight if that is what you are asking. Azazel, Sparta can you tell us who your friend is? Sparta, he is the dark dragon of the crescent moon Krom Kruuk. Chapter 72, Boob Dragon v slash S Butt Dragon Krom, I didn't expect you to know my name. Sparta, I know a lot of things. Kataria was fuming because Sparta called her an insect but she had heard about his power so she was not sure what to do but finally her ego won over her common reasoning. Kataria, how dare you call me an insect even though you are a pure Lucifer you are supporting the current Devil Kings what a disgrace. Sparta, just shut up, if you live we will talk about this later. Sparta said that and released a huge amount of power from his body. The power was definitely of peak Satan class level. Sparta kicked the ground and punched Krom Kruuk. He guarded against the attack but he was blasted away from the room making a body-sized hole in the wall. Sparta also jumped out following him. Krom landed about 3-0m away and Sparta landed in front of him. Krom, 
I didn't expect your punch to have so much power. Sparta, well I am full of surprises. After Sparta said that, both Krom and Sparta kicked the ground and started to fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The ground beneath them started to crack as they were fighting. Krom was the best hand-to-hand -hand fighter Sparta has ever fought. He was able to keep up with Sparta. Sparta covered his fists with demonic energy and Krom also did the same but with dragon energy. Whenever they both had any contact a shockwave would form. Sparta saw from the corner of his eye as to how the other fight was going on and saw that Kataria was losing. Sparta stopped attacking Krom and jumped backward to make some distance between them. Sparta, aren't you going to help your friend? Krom, she is not my friend. I don't care if she lives or dies, I only care about our fight. Sparta, well said you are definitely in the top of my favorable people list. Krom, thanks I am so flattered, so why don't we kick up the fight by a notch? Krom didn't wait for Sparta's reply and directly transformed into his dragon form and spits fire where Sparta was standing. Their school was also caught up in the fire and it was completely destroyed. The whole surface beneath Sparta was transformed into molten lava. Tia's flame was not even comparable to Krom's flame. Sparta saved himself by forming a space barrier around him. Sparta's eyes changed into M's and a dark purple aura started to cover him. Sparta, Suzanu. After saying that Sparta was being covered a skeleton which soon was covered by muscles and soon by Chinese armor it had four arms and fire was burning in place of its eyes. It had four swords tied to his waist. It had a gem on its forehead in which Sparta was standing proudly. It was standing tall by 50m which was a little bit smaller than Krom's dragon form. Everyone except Azazel, Vali, and Tia were shocked seeing the towering giant. Krom, I have never seen any power like this. Sparta, I told you I am full of surprises. Sparta didn't wait for Krom to prepare himself and attacked him. Sparta punched Krom in his face and was about to continue punching him when suddenly the surroundings changed to normal. Sparta got slightly distracted because he wanted to check on Sana, Tsubaki, and Akeno's condition. Krom takes advantage of this moment and makes some distance between himself and Sparta. Krom, why are you holding back? Sparta, I was just having fun fighting with you and if I use my full power you will die. Krom, honestly I didn't think that the difference between us be so huge so the rumor was true you being in the top three. Sparta, so why did you decide to show yourself? Krom, Afis told me about your existence so I wanted to check out for myself so here I am. Sparta, okay that is enough now let's continue. Sparta and Krom were about to resume their fight but they were suddenly interrupted by a sudden burst of power. Sparta was really amused to see that the power belonged to Issei, Krom also stopped and looked towards them. Sparta, do you continue our fight? I have lost all interest. Krom, you are a lot stronger than me it is insulting but I am no match for you. Sparta, so let's see their fight. Sparta deactivated his Suzanu and started to spectate the fight of Issei and Vali. Everyone was shocked seeing that Sparta let go Krom and was now standing beside him watching the fight between Vali and Issei. Vali used a move called Half Dimension and Issei was tipped off by Azazel that the move Vali used will divide Rias's breasts to half of its size which helped Issei to release a huge amount of power and he was able to strike down Vala to ground. Vala was about to activate his juggernaut drive but Sparta decided to intervene. Sparta, brother you should stop look around you if you activate that here a lot of innocent humans can die. Vali, ugh. <laughs> okay. Issei train harder and grow stronger, next time my brother won't be there to save you. Sparta, so who won the butt dragon emperor or boob dragon emperor? You were fighting to prove the superiority of boobs over butts and vice versa right? Vali was enraged by what Sparta said and Azazel was rolling on the floor laughing. Vali, wa what are you talking about? Sparta, oh you know very well what I am talking about. Vali was about to retort but suddenly the barrier broke around them and Bikuo dropped from the sky and took Vali with him and Krom also teleported away. Sertsks, why did you let an evil dragon escape? Sparta. If we have fought here seriously the barrier would easily break and innocent humans would be involved. There would be a lot of collateral damage. We fought for a little bit and see what happened this whole place is destroyed. Michael, I have to agree with him Sertsks, he is right. Azazel, Sparta are you okay? Sparta, why shouldn't be I okay? Azazel, I meant your brother betrayed us. Sparta, well he must have his reasons. Michael. Sparta if you are free would you mind coming with us to the heaven tomorrow? Sparta, no, no problem. I would really like to visit there. Chapter 73, Zenovia 
After Michael finished his conversation with Sparta was approached by Sana, who had a really angry expression on her face. Sana, you thought of collateral damage I like it but if you have thought about that before the school was melted I would highly appreciate. Sparta, hey. Sana you should calm down. You see I was not the one who melted it. It was Krom Kruuk, he was the real culprit. Sana, I don't care but you are the one who initiated the fight so you will be fixing the school. Sparta, I remembered that you were frozen at that time. Sana, a little birdie told me, you don't have to fix exactly you will just be giving us your magical power so we can fix it. Sparta, that will be completely fine with me. Just don't suck me dry. Sana, wah wah what are you saying stupid? That was wrong on so many levels. Sparta, you are so cute when you get flustered. Sparta was about to go and talk with Amy and the rest of the girls but he was stopped by Zenovia. Zenovia, thank you for your advice back then, because of that I was able to move on. Sparta, glad to hear that, so how is heaven? Zenovia, it is pretty nice, it is just like I have expected. I just have expected it along with God. Sparta, so what card did you get? Zenovia. I am the Queen of Hearts. Gabriel Sama has the set of hearts. Sparta, that is nice to know so where is Gabriel? Zenovia, Gabriel Sama is talking with Michael Sama about some stuff. Hey, Irina come here. Sparta, she is also an angel now, so your plan of keeping her in dark didn't work so well. Zenovia, after returning the fragments to the church she was approached by Michael Sama and now she is Michael Sama's ace. As Zenovia finished her sentence Irina reached them. Irina, Sparta-sama please forgive me for how I have treated you before. I am really ashamed of how I have behaved. I want to apologize from the bottom of my heart. Irina said all these while she bowed down to Sparta. Sparta, it's fine now, raise your head I forgive you. Irina, are you sure? You forgave me so easily. Sparta, well I don't like to bully someone so sure I forgive you. Zenovia, Sparta-sama I want to talk with you in private. Sparta. I have told you before to call me just Sparta and, Sparta snapped his fingers and he and Zenovia were in a space barrier, now no one can hear us. Zenovia, what was that power? Sparta, that is a secret. Zenovia, Sparta you gave me salvation when I lost everything, you showed me the path when there was nothing left for me. I owe my whole life to you so I want to dedicate the rest of my life to you. Sparta, whoa. 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 Slow down. Where did the dedicating your whole life came from? Aren't you happy being an angel? Zenovia, I am happy being an angel but that is what makes it more necessary that I repay you. I have discussed it with Gabriel Sama and she had allowed me to do this. You have given me happiness so I want to share this happiness with you, that is the least I can do for you. Sparta, but I don't lack any happiness I have got everything I want. Zenovia, I know that I am nothing in front of the status or power of your current fiancés. I cannot even dare to compare with them. I just want to support you I am ready to become your maid or servant for that. Sparta, just stop right there. Let me make myself clear to you I am not your object of devotion. I don't want a worshipper but I can accept a lover. But you yourself not clear with your feelings, first make sure that these feelings you have are love, not devotion. When you make sure then come to me. Sparta snapped his fingers and broke the barrier and walked away leaving a confused and sad Zenovia. Sparta walked towards Amy, she was standing along with Skathatch and Tia. Amy, so what were you talking about with that blue-haired girl? Sparta, nothing much. Amy, so did you accept her? Sparta, am I that easy to read? Amy, I have been dating you for eight years and I have been sleeping in your bed for four years so I can assure you that you are an open book to me. Sparta, weren't these eight years the best years of your life? Amy came forward and kissed Sparta on his lips. Amy, yes they were. Skathatch slash Tia, hey that was not fair. Sparta, come here, girls. After that Sparta kissed both of them, which made them really happy and the four of them were just talking casually after that. After a few minutes, Sana joined them. Sana, Sparta come, we have a lot of work to do. Sparta, lead the way babe. Then Sana led Sparta towards her peerage. They were making magic circles to channel Sparta's magical energy so that they can restore their melted school. Soon they activated the process and after a few minutes, the school was completely restored. With the joint effort of all the factions, all the remaining things were restored. Soon every faction leaders were ready to leave along with their subordinates. 
Sira was the most unwilling one to leave. She didn't want to leave her little sister but Sana was able to somehow persuade her. Angels were about to leave when Gabriel came to Sparta. Gabriel, I will come tomorrow to pick you up. Sparta, I will be waiting for you. Gabriel, Sparta I heard what you have told Zenovia and I completely agree with you. What she thinks is not love. Sparta, don't worry about that stuff I will never take advantage of anyone. She might not be the brightest bulb within the bunch but she is a nice girl. Gabriel, don't worry me and Irina will be there to support her. Sparta, you yourself take care. After saying that the angels teleport to heaven in a bright flash of light. From the Shinto region, all the guards teleport back to Takamagahara and Amy stayed back to go home with Sparta. Azazel also left saying that he will repay Issei in a way only he can. Sparta, now let's go home girls, I have a long day tomorrow. Chapter 74, Visiting Heaven Sparta and the girls reached the home and decided to sleep directly. The girls decided that they will be going to shopping because Sparta will be in heaven for the whole day. The next day Sparta woke up early and got freshened and wore a suit without a tie and went downstairs and found that the maids were preparing breakfast. Sparta, how have you been guys? Kelly, we have been fine Sparta, Akeno told us that you fought with a evil dragon yesterday. How can you find fun in that? Sparta, since I was small I always like to fight with strong opponents but yesterday's fight was no fun, I soon lost interest. It's unusual to see all the three of you working in the kitchen. Kala Warner, your fiancés are going shopping today and they will be taking us. So we are completing our tasks as soon as possible. Sparta, well you guys have fun today. Martel, you two be safe in heaven. Sparta, there is no one who can harm me there but thanks for getting worried about me. Kelly, we all were trash back in Grigori but you have always treated us with respect. Everyone in your house treats us with respect so we will always be grateful to you. Sparta, well that is nice to hear. Can I have some coffee? Martel, coming right up. After few seconds Martel poured some coffee for Sparta and handed him the cup. Sparta calmly drank his coffee. While he was drinking his coffee a bright light appeared in the dining hall and Gabriel came out of it. Sparta, good morning Gabriel. Do you want some tea? Gabriel, yes please. Kelly, coming right up Gabriel Sama. Kelly handed a cup to Gabriel. Gabriel, we need to visit Vatican before going to heaven. Sparta, why? Gabriel, my joker was out on a mission. Before coming here I received her message that she completed her mission and she is in Vatican. She will be going with us. Sparta, okay, so I am leaving the teleportation duty to you. Gabriel, I gladly accept. Sparta and Gabriel soon finished their coffee and tea respectively. Sparta moved near Gabriel as they would be leaving. Sparta, you girls stay safe out there, tell the rest to be safe too. As Sparta finished saying that both him and Gabriel vanished in a bright light. Both of them appeared in some room. Sparta was feeling holy energy coming from the whole building meaning that they were inside a church. The holy energy didn't even bother Sparta as he was completely immune to holy objects. They both exited the room and Sparta found themselves in a courtyard of a church and they started walking towards the cross. A woman in sister's clothes was standing beneath the cross. Gabriel and Sparta walked up to her. The woman then turned towards them. The woman had blonde hair and deep blue eyes and she seemed to be in her late twenties or early thirties. On the back of her hand she had J written indicating that she was Joker. Sparta recognized her as Griselda Quarta. Gabriel, Sparta meet Griselda she is my Joker. Sparta extended his hands to shake her hands. She returned the gesture and shook his hand. Sparta, hello I am Sparta Gilgamesh Lucifer. It's nice to meet you. Griselda, I am Griselda Quarta, it is nice to meet you too. I have heard a lot about you. Sparta, I hope all of those are nice things. Gabriel, now that is out of the way, we will go to heaven. Griselda you can give me the report of your mission there. Griselda, okay Gabriel Sama. After that the three of them disappeared in a bright light leaving an empty church. They all appeared in a place which was completely white. Clouds were floating all around them. Sparta liked the view before him. Sparta, this is beautiful, where are we? Gabriel, we are currently in heaven. Sparta, I know that, I meant we were in which level of heaven. Griselda, we are in first heaven all the brave saints or low-level angels reside here. Sparta, okay nice. Gabriel, Griselda get freshened up then up to Zebel for your report. Now Sparta let's go to Zebel. 
Sparta and Gabriel teleport leaving Griselda. Gabriel and Sparta appeared inside Michael's office. Michael was doing some paperwork before they teleported into the room. Seeing them Michael had a smile on his face as always. Michael, glad you could make it, now let me show you around. Gabriel you can leave now I will show Sparta around. Gabriel, but I also want to show him around. Michael, you can spend time with him later but now you need to complete your work. Gabriel angrily pouted at Michael and left the room. Michael, Sparta it's nice to see you again. Now let's go. Sparta and Michael exited the room. Michael, this is Sixth Heaven also known as Zebel. All the seraphs reside here. After that both of them teleported. They appeared in a black space where stars could be seen. It was like space. Michael, you have already seen first heaven so I brought you to second heaven. We angels observe the stars from here and we also can find the angels here who have sinned. Sparta, the angels who sin, don't they become a fallen? Michael, there are some sins which you can commit without becoming a fallen. Sparta, this was new to me. Sparta and Michael teleported and appeared in a vast and immeasurable land. Michael, this is where all the human souls come to reside after their deaths. Sparta, that means my mother should be here. Michael, do you want me to search for her? Sparta, no not now, maybe later. I never knew her, I always dreamt of meeting her. Michael, what was her name? Sparta, her name was Arato Misaki. Now let's go we have lots of work to do. After that both Sparta and Michael teleported and they appeared in a garden. Michael, this is the garden of Adam and Eve. You should know the rest. Sparta, that I know. After that they both teleported to a place where they had a lot of rooms. Michael, this is the fifth heaven. All the members of Gregory lived here before they fell. Now we use this place for research. All the brave saints were made here. Sparta, Azazel will do anything to come here. Michael, I can agree with you on that. Now let's move on. They disappeared in a bright light and appeared in front of huge machine. It had two tablet-like touch screen over it to control it. Michael, welcome to seventh heaven this is the sacred gear system and this is God's system. This is the place where God resided before he died. Sparta, this is pretty cool. Chapter 75, God's System and Hero of Heaven Michael, yes it is pretty cool. Sparta, so what do I need to do? Michael, I am only able to maintain the system at the lowest configuration. To run it at full capacity we both need to put our energy into this. You just need to access the administrative functions. Sparta, so where should I put my energy? Michael, put up palm here and channel your power to this platform. Michael shows Sparta a platform where an outline of palm was made. Sparta placed his hand there and was about to channel his power when Michael stopped him. Michael, before we make any changes in the system we need to fix all the errors in the system or the system might fail. Sparta, how will I fix the errors? Michael, you don't need to you just need to keep supplying your energy. I will fix the errors. We will be putting energy into it simultaneously. Sparta, okay I got it. In Gabriel's office. Griselda, Gabriel Sama do you and Michael Sama trust Sparta? Gabriel, yes we do. Griselda, what if he betrays us after accessing the system? Gabriel, if he wanted to do that, he could have easily done it. Why would someone strong like him would need to lie? Griselda, is he that strong? Gabriel, yes, all of the seraphs combined cannot injure him. Griselda was shocked hearing this. She calmed down and was about to ask something when suddenly the whole heaven started to shake. In seventh heaven. Michael, don't stop we are almost there. Sparta, this thing is like a bottomless pit. All the shaking stopped and the system started to emit a mild light. A touch screen rose and came in front of Sparta. Michael, keep your other palm over it to register as its new administrator. Sparta keeps his right palm on the touch screen while his left palm was on the platform where he was supplying power. The system stopped emitting light and the touch screen now had Sparta's name and picture in it, which showed that Sparta successfully became the new administrator. Michael, keep supplying energy I will start fixing the system. Don't overexert yourself or my sister will kill me. Sparta, I can keep going like this for a few hours before passing out. Michael, okay just hold on. Michael then started to check all the errors. A list showed up before them showing that there was 2031 errors total in the system. Sparta, how long it will take to fix all these errors? Michael, I don't know, 
I have to fix all these individually some might take more time than the others. Sparta, okay I will do what I can. Michael didn't say anything and started to fix the errors. Soon an hour passed and Michael was only able to fix 337 errors. Sparta was sweating heavily. Michael, Sparta how are you holding up? Sparta, I am running on fumes here. Michael, don't overexert yourself. Stop when you are not able to continue. Sparta, okay I will tell you. Sparta was releasing his complete devil power so that he can keep the system active. He can easily say that this was the toughest day he had ever faced. Soon another hour passed and Michael had now fixed a total of 745 errors. Sparta was completely tired. All of his energy reserves were empty. Sparta, Michael I stopping, I am completely exhausted. Sparta stops putting his energy and the system deactivates its edit mode. Sparta was breathing heavily and he was completely covered in sweat. Michael, thank you Sparta, I cannot convey how thankful I am to you in mere words. Sparta, I will continue tomorrow. I need to regain my energy now. Michael, yes of course. Then Michael teleports Sparta along with him to Zebel and finds all the seraphs were standing there. Uriel, did it work brother? Michael, yes it did. Today we were able to fix 745 errors out of 2031 errors which was a huge success. We will continue tomorrow, now get the hero of heaven a room. There should not be any complaints from our guest here. He is the hero of heaven. After hearing this all the seraphs cheered and Sparta was led to a room by Gabriel. As soon as Sparta entered the room he flopped on the bed. Gabriel, you have really exerted yourself. Sparta, that I did. Gabriel, you didn't need to push yourself so much. Sparta, don't worry this is also training for me. Gabriel, so hero of heaven how can I serve you? Sparta, you can do one thing. Michael came into Sparta's room to check on him. He knocked on the door and entered and found that Sparta was laying his head over Gabriel's lap while she was caressing his head. Michael, sister take care of him, he had worked really hard today. Just don't cross any line for now. Gabriel, I know brother after all this waiting I am not going to do that now. Sparta, don't worry Michael I also care about her. Michael, you were awake? Sparta, yes I was just resting, I still need to inform my women back home about my stay in heaven. Michael. I see. Sparta there is one more thing I want to offer you. Sparta, I am not helping you to get any favors. Michael, I know that, but still hear me out. There is one more stage above Super Devils. Sparta, what is it? Why didn't I ever heard about it? Michael, it was a closely guarded secret, more secret than the death of God. Only the Archangels know about that. That form is called the Devil God. Sparta, why are you telling me this now? How can I achieve that? Michael, I am telling you this because I trust you completely and to achieve it you need to be recognized by God's system as its administrator and you need to be at peak super class level. Now since the most difficult condition is met, you could easily have made the breakthrough. But since I had the information I decided to tell you. Sparta, so I don't need any breakthrough as I had at super class? Michael, no you don't need any breakthrough, now you just need to be at peak super class. Sparta then I will become a devil god in this week only. By the way thanks for trusting me so much. Michael, you are doing so much for us. This is the least I can do for you. Now take rest and get better. After that Michael left the room. Gabriel, I am so proud of you. Sparta, I never imagined that angels would trust a devil so much. Gabriel, one race doesn't decide one's personality. There are many evil angels out there. Sparta, well let me call Amy. After that Sparta calls Amy by a magic circle. Amy, Sparta when will you return? Sparta, sorry babe, but I will be staying here for a week. There is too much work than we had assumed at first. Amy, okay darling no problem, just stay safe. Sparta, ask Sana to get me excused from school and I love you guys too. You guys also stay safe, now gotta go I am tired. After that Sparta disconnected the call that turned towards Gabriel. Sparta, Gabriel you are so beautiful. Gabriel gets embarrassed by Sparta's sudden compliment and her cheeks turned red. Gabriel, stop it or I will fall. Thanks for listening. <laughs>